Greetings everyone, this is 2018 and 9th of October and uh, the reason why we do a show today uh, is because unfortunately on 1st of October um, 
probably uh, one of the oldest uh, C64 musicians career wise of course Ben Douglas has unfortunately passed away and uh, today's show will be all about him honoring him and respecting him and uh, we will talk with a lot of people it seems to be also we have uh, recorded uh, materials to show you some messages are recorded uh, Slagon is with me at the moment I am and uh, Boz seems to be late but uh, well he might show up at some point we hope so and uh, well Slagon can you tell some memories experiences regarding Ben just in a nutshell well there's gonna be a, a lot of detail uh, later on in the evening but in general um, I think the gist of all of these stories is that Ben was always very energetic and um, always fun to be around yeah even even if you didn't know him uh, personally of course uh, if you check some videos or some uh, pictures you you can just see that he radiates and and his energy is just amazing how he performed and uh, not to mention his compositions of course yeah they are always happy yeah indeed and uh, we started off the show with Thomas Dieter's Cobra uh, well about Cobra of course you have to know that it's sidized uh, uh, by Ben because it's not uh, his original composition it was a uh, uh, soundtrack of a series no from the, from the movie Cobra. from the movie sorry sorry uh, my my bad uh, from the movie Cobra so uh, this is what he uh, recreated and of course since it became a Sid uh, many great remixes was born after that but the Sid is also amazing yeah some some of the remixes even better than the original yeah indeed absolutely and I think that this was one of them indeed. So, uh, I think we should kickstart this evening because we will have a very busy schedule, it looks like. And uh, immediately as a first guest, uh, probably after this track, you can welcome uh, Chris Hulse back to On Our Ban. So, uh, we will see. Of course, we will play now a request which hopefully will p- play well. And uh, Duke Sigmund said... Uh, Ha, a good evening, Ziona Slegon and Boz. Uh, hi, Boz, somewhere far away. Uh, musical wizard and one of my childhood heroes is now a star in the skies. I would like to hear the first piece of his I have ever heard and which I love very much, the Omega version of Deflector. Thank you very much. Uh, sure, and I really hope that we prepared the right version for you. So here comes the Omega version of Deflector.
this was the Omega version of Deflector, and uh, to be completely honest, uh, that's the first time when I hear the Omega version of it. Yes, yes, so got here. Yeah, a bit, bit of uh, broken balloons, kind of a uh, kick and snare in there. Yeah, it's uh, it's very interesting. However, to check uh, what uh, other people do on other plot. Well, uh, let's make a call now, shall we? I think if we can approach Chris, because uh, well, we promised it like uh, around fifteen ish. So let's check it out if we can reach him. Um, hi, Chris. Hey. Hi. Oh, we hear you loud and clear. Connections, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to figure out the right internet here. Ah, you're right. Okay, but now you can hear us, right? Yes. Okay, okay, excellent. Uh, sorry, I was a bit earlier, I think, but uh, thought that you were calling like uh, two minutes ago. Turned out that probably it was an accidental call. So yeah, that was probably somebody else. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, how are you now, and how is your Pretty evening? Good. Ah, Let good. me plug in the other microphone. It might be better. Um, how does that sound? That sounds better. Definitely, definitely, we can hear you now. Yeah. So okay, good. So uh, welcome on air of Slay Radio again, and uh, and I gotta ask you, uh, how much did you know Ben, and uh, do you have any specific memories that you would like to share regarding him? Well, I, I certainly grew up with his music, and. Uh, but back then there was no internet and I didn't visit uh, England as a teenager so uh, it was very hard to make like a personal connection but uh, of course his music uh, was always there for me um, in those early C64 days yeah. and he was definitely one of my favorites. Yes, understandable. We even heard uh, fairly recently that he might be one of the first uh, well, the first uh, uh, British composer who was in employee quality by a company, a game composer, mm -hmm. so to speak. So, yeah. yeah. True pioneer. Yeah, yes. absolutely groundbreaking. And um, I did actually finally meet him a few years uh, ago at uh, Back in Time Live in Brighton, England. Oh, and how was the meeting? Um, very brief, very short, but uh, he appeared to be like a very warm-hearted character, and uh, so I, I did enjoy meeting him a lot. Uh, but we didn't have a lot of time that day, um, uh, because there were like lots and lots of people who wanted to talk to him. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine, I can imagine. And uh, about his stage performance? Uh have you uh, mm -hmm. observed him? I, I've seen the I've seen the performance that he did at Back in Time. Uh, I think he was playing the flute there, and it was uh, very cool. Wow! Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I don't know. Slagon said recently that whatever instrument he he touched, he could make miracles with that too. But he yes, absolutely. He was he was a multi instrumentalist, I guess. Yeah, uh, one of one of you in our uh, business um, yeah he could probably pick up any instrument I saw a few um, videos about him on YouTube uh, including one like that was was that like an outtake video that was just a few days ago released uh, from the bedroom to billions guys all oh, right yeah and that was that was very insightful uh, and and uh, you really loved his uh, uh, easy um, going personality there and how he was really getting into the music and um, and and just uh, he did it with so much heart yeah it yeah. was all heart with him yeah all all his heart was his appear in his appearance and his performances and uh, yeah it's uh, quite fascinating and uh, 
If you would have a, a favorite uh, composition of him, uh, could you tell some? Yeah, my, yeah, my all-time favorite um, piece from uh, Ben Daglish is the Trap demo. Uh, that was this game called Trap, um, oh, yeah. where <laughs> they they were hiding this um, kind of like a, it was almost like a Commodore 64 rock opera. Um, thing in there where uh, there was this long music that would like be like a soundtrack to and then synced to the music there were these graphics with the drummer that was pounding the drum and then in the background there was this planet and then some alien came down and visited the planet and stuff like that and that was so cool uh, uh, yeah that's uh, that's that's my favorite <laughs> but he's, he's written quite a few awesome pieces um, uh, one of the, uh, the interesting thing is, I, I barely played any games that he was involved with. Um, <laughs> um, but I remember uh, Ark Pandora um, is a project where you did this, I think it's the title track, Subtune 3. Uh, that always struck me. Uh, it's not that it was technically so uh, amazing, it was the composition that really blew me away because uh, it had such a wonderful melody and stuff like that and then there's a couple of other small games like bombo and deflector that i really like but not the games just the music <laughs> <laughs> yeah you are the on the musical side of the things i guess uh, so are we uh with slagon both of us yeah so. I, I think it was kind of a regular thing uh with a lot of the music and uh especially with uh last ninja for me i loaded and yeah. played the games just to hear the music yeah. It's it's one of those interesting things. Everybody thinks of Last Ninja first and and uh, names it. I have never played Last Ninja. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even I wasn't even much aware of it. I don't know. Maybe I was just not into ninjas. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> I just I just later uh, became aware when 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 I did my um, my little show there uh, on uh, Twitch a couple of years ago and. Um, we played it there as like a, you know, a Commodore 64 special, and I realized uh, what a milestone that game was. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't much of a gamer either, but uh, Last Ninja was certainly one of the uh, the games I did play, and mostly for the mm. music. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. therefore, an enormous amount of remixes uh, were made out of it. Yeah, it both might, both yeah, yeah, might yeah. actually be uh, the most uh, remixed uh, soundtrack for games. Uh, very much so, I guess, yeah. Uh, I don't know if we would compare uh, the first, the second and the third, which one would be the at uh, the first place, but I bet that it would be first or second. I Probably, think. yeah. Yeah, so... Probably. Yeah, and uh, I think that we could uh, meet you soon uh, on the weekend on, on Back in Time Live as well in Norway oh, right, right? Yeah, you, you're going to Norway yes I'll be there yeah, yeah. Exactly. I'm leaving I'm leaving tomorrow and uh, after long travels I will finally uh, meet up on Friday in Norway oh okay okay so you're not traveling by plane in that case no I am but uh, ah, slowly okay. I mean like I first uh, go to Germany for a night and then I fly over to Norway on Friday morning. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, maybe a little bit of sightseeing, sightseeing can be also. Yeah, I, I think I think to drive from Arizona would take slightly longer. <laughs> <laughs> would be slightly more wet as well. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, you would have to load uh, the vehicle on a ship or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, very much so. Well, uh, I, I'm still like hoping that at some point uh, I can take my nomad life to uh, Europe for a tri for for a while, uh, make like a tour through Europe with a with a camper van or something. That would be really cool. Mm, and then I would lovely. obviously also do Scandinavia and oh, come to Sweden. Okay, and yeah, you're always welcome. <laughs> I say on behalf of Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Indeed, and yeah. and I guess you are absolutely welcome in the entire Europe. I can uh, I can talk in the name of uh, Central and Eastern Europe as well. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. absolutely. <laughs> 
Well, thank you very much for uh, dedicating time to us and especially for yeah. Ben. Uh, uh, if yeah, you, I, s- it's, I was really sad about uh, his passing, uh, but I think his music will live forever. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Such a pity that we won't uh, meet with him in Bergen. A bit like right. wasn't he like even uh, supposed to be there or? Oh yeah, yeah. He was supposed to be there. Yeah, exactly, okay. exactly. He would be one well, of the I, guests. I bet we will uh, honor his um, uh, body of work there when we when we're coming together there. Most definitely. Yeah, yeah. It would be nice talk, but yeah, unfortunately. But uh, yeah. Well, well, I'm actually looking forward to seeing you guys again. Yeah, indeed. Yes, we look forward to see you too and. Uh, Have a nice week and a nice trip to Bergen and uh, see you there on the weekend. And thank you once again for uh, calling in. Yeah, thanks for taking the time. Thank you very much. And um, thanks to all the fans out there. Yeah, indeed. (laughs) Thank you. And uh, have a nice evening. Bye. Bye. (laughs) Bye Bye-bye. So, well, uh, Chris, who was back, was our first caller, and uh, we can welcome shortly our second caller as well, uh, who would be Marcel Donny. Uh, I don't know if I should introduce everyone uh, way before, or maybe as a surprise, <laughs> because... It's not really a surprise kind of show, is it? No, it's not really, but uh, yeah, um, you could hear about one or two people whom you know uh, this evening, still checking in for a few minutes. And uh, I guess we carry on now with a request, uh, because Shargo wants to hear Martin Dodd and Cobra, uh, Subtune 1 remix. So, yeah, a little bit of music and uh, a caller after that, I guess.
Beautiful Guitar Outro uh, of Cobra by Martin Dodd. And there we go again. And now uh, we approach our next time frame, which is half past eight, which means that we are calling our next suspect, who happens to be Marcel. And let's hope he is around. <laughs> <laughs> That might, might have happened. Anyway, we will wait a bit, I guess. And, uh, well, uh, Skype in the case he's unavailable. Well, he's very much online. Uh, we will wait uh, for a little bit for him, I guess. And uh, uh, till that time, till he arrives, we probably uh, might talk uh, about your first experience. Do you remember when you first listened to Ben's music? Um, unknowingly, I think uh, I did earlier uh, than I thought, but uh, like knowing the composer would would have been somewhere with Last Ninja, I guess, where hmm. it re- really pop, pop, popped out and uh, just made a mark. I needed to know who wrote those, those songs. Uh, there were a bunch I liked uh, and as everyone else you recorded them on tape and you carried them around with, and listened to them with your Walkman <laughs> as you did in the Lovely. 80s uh, so yeah well, I had a bunch on there and of course you had the counter thing on the Walkman so you could uh, fast forward to the proper or the right song and uh, I did have well the classics of course like the Fred Gray and uh, Hubbard but uh, also uh, Ben Daglish a bunch uh, as you do <laughs> <laughs> yeah There's some generations have Walkman generations I, I did save some uh, to mp3 sexually <laughs> in the 90s <laughs> Then there yeah, we didn't have the luxury, luxury of uh, MP3s. Yes, I know. <laughs> Or digital storage, for that matter. Yeah, I'm very sorry that I was born <laughs> a little bit later, but that doesn't mean that I don't appreciate this music. So ah, Now Marcel um, is online. Indeed. So, uh, let's call him again. Let's. Let's. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Marcel. Hello. How are you doing? Um... Very good. Uh, just slightly uh, tired because we flew back from Belfast today. Ah, oh, right. Um, you mentioned and had, that. And we had a long weekend, so uh, yeah, it was all good. Uh, but yeah, it's just um, very trying on uh, the human lever. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the Guinness uh, device. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that <laughs> that was hell of a Guinness, new Guinness filter. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, in fact, my my liver is screaming at me. What are you thinking, you plonker? <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Would you share us some memories uh, regarding Ben, if you could? Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I hear there are a lot of them. <laughs> I know one, uh, but this is uh, pre-Ben. This was uh, right before uh, you went on stage for the first time and smoked a cigarette. The fastest I've ever seen anyone smoke a cigarette in one oh. inhalation. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you have a story related uh, to Ben regarding that. Uh, yes, was that uh, Brighton or was that in uh, um, that church in London? Yeah, St. Luke's. St. Luke's, thank you. Yeah, no, Brighton was even worse. <laughs> um, the runner-up to Brighton was to uh, 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 Rain sent all of us um, transcripts of, oh, yeah, this is it, and this is how we're going to play it. Um, uh, it's just that it was, to me, it was nothing. It was just a, a page that a fly had diarrhea on. <laughs> <laughs> Because I can't read notes. So I mail them back says could you at least just put chords uh, 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 chords at uh, the f- uh, at the whole thing and, and I'll I'll, g- I'll take it from there and there's oh yeah you're sure oh, just a minor e blah, 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 did that 
Uh, so I rehearsed that. Uh, no problem at all. And it all went well. And I thought, oh, this is, yeah, this is going to work out. No problem at all. Good. Fine. Until the gig. No, until the rehearsals started. We all met up at the Matt Fl- Fiddler's house. And um, Ryan and the band were getting together. So says, what about us? Uh, you, you know, Paperboy is a bit boring. You know, it's just mm, all samey, blah, 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 blah. Um, why don't we stick something else in there? And they decided that... <laughs> Uh, oh, let's stick a bit of arcade classics on there. Why don't we? Here's the note sheet. <laughs> exactly. And I was fucking breaking it. I thought, what? I did rehearse that. Anyway, if I rehearse it, I can do it. No problem at all. And they just slammed, what is it, 32 bars or something else in there. And I thought, oh, oh no. So anyway, got, got around it. Uh, Luckily, there was a, a, a piano there, so I could sort of blah, 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 blah. Okay, fine, good. Just, oh, well, just a couple of chords. I can do that, I think. Um, and then uh, the, the, the next day, or was it the same day? I don't know. I can't remember. Um, uh, we went into the re- re- rehearsal, and uh, somebody handed me a keyboard. I thought, yeah, fine. Bling, bling. Yeah, works. And we went through the whole set a couple of times, and I thought, oh, well... It's not that bad. Not that bad. Um, and just, I know this band looking at me. This is, um, could you be a bit more involved? And he was like, and I was like, what do you mean? Well, you just sit there and and you just go through the notes. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. That's what I'm doing. I'm not used to. Just playing stuff. I'm just all right. Just try to look relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, all right, okay. Just uh, you know what? Get me a couple of beers once I'm there. I'm, I'll be fine. So we did that, and um, what was it again? Oh yeah, band's announcements. Uh, announcement that we were the first band ever to rehearse over email. <laughs> <laughs> that's, also, that's, uh, that's another thing it's because we did uh, can we change this or can we, can we put this there and uh, yeah it's just just all the little things uh, I wish I'd, I, I, I'd saved those emails because they were gold <laughs> I'm sure one of you have them somewhere well, printed r- out rehearsing <laughs> in email is probably the most extreme thing in a case of a band that I ever heard of because I heard of bands that uh, the, the, all the members are living in different parts of a certain country uh, yes. namely Sidrup Alliance for instance because <laughs> none of them are living at the same city not even remotely close to each other and sometimes they come together but they certainly didn't do an email rehearsal I think <laughs> Necropolo might talk about this later on. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that's what happened, and that's the fun thing about it. But uh, yeah, um, the the first back in time in Brighton that I did was my first gig. So um, after you know, I've, I was I, I shite myself nearly, and Ben was like, ah. Don't worry, darling. Once you've once you've done the first four bars, you'll you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the uh, first four bars where they serve beer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah, he was really just, uh, you know, just let it come over you, and it, it, it'll be fine. It's, it'll be good. It's no problem at all. Um, which it was. Uh, I remember, remember what I needed to do, so I just did it. And after that gig was finished, we all met backstage, and we very hot, sweaty, bothered, gagging for a pint. And I told him, "says You know, this was my actually first gig on a stage," and he. <laughs> and he burst out into a laughter and he grinned at me, he hugged me and he said, so 
I've taken your stage virginity. <laughs> <laughs> and I told him, yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, the honor. <laughs> <laughs> it was. <clears throat> Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, on the video stream, we see a bunch of um, uh, pictures from those gigs, actually. With you in them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Ben cheering with some champagne. Looks happy. <laughs> He's, I'm oh, certain, yes. certain he uh, thinks of uh, popping your cherry. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. <laughs> and then, uh, what was it? Uh, we played, uh, I don't know what year it was. It was in Denmark, I think. Oh, Copenhagen Retro Concert, 2000. Was it? Yeah, five? with uh, press, press Play on Tape. And, yeah. uh, uh, it was 2005, wasn't it? Yeah. No, five or nine? I can't remember, really. No, I think it was five. Yeah, yeah probably not nine. So um, I, I drove up to Copenhagen with uh, a car full of gear. Uh, we we did the rehearsals and then, then uh, I don't can't remember what what the track was, but um, Mark and Andreas got into an argument. Sometimes you know stuff into a band just tense up a bit and. And that, that went on for about four minutes, and then Ben interrupts us. Oh, no, 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 you fucking prima donnas. This is how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Oh, that's perfect, really. <laughs> and, and that was it. Everybody just shut up and hmm. just went Ben's way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he seemed like a peacemaker, I think. He was getting uh, along with yes. people, right? That's... Uh, Always cheerful oh, yeah. and, and uh, looks like very social. Oh yes, very much. He was a a people's person, which is quite unusual uh, amongst composers or most of the composers, at least, I guess. Yeah, I think so. Uh, no, he he just served the music, and he had uh, an idea, but he. he you know, he, he would go along with a little squabble or whatever, but um, if it took too long, he would just cut it short and say, just, you know, shut the fuck up because you don't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> no place for prima donna behavior. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, that sounds really nice. If you would, uh, well, if you could forward a message now to him, what would you say? Hmm. Uh, sorry, I missed your fiftieth birthday party because I, I I put the wrong date in my. And I was in Italy at the point uh, because uh, yeah, I would have I, I would have so wanted to have celebrated that fiftieth birthday with, and it's really sad that two years after. Slightly, two, slightly more than two years after that, we lose him. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, indeed. But uh, we we really thank you for your time that you dedicated for this cause, and uh, I guess uh, we see each other soon uh, in like four weeks. Well, I guess less less than a month. Yes. Yes, yeah. exactly on X. Uh, <laughs> Of course, if anyone else uh, still wants to join, uh, probably there one day tickets available because the <laughs> entire weekend tickets are sold out. So, yeah, in Netherlands, summer and uh, the biggest, probably the world's biggest 64 event will happen, which happens every two years, once every two years. So, yeah, one of a kind event. And, uh, well, there will be several people there. Uh, and, of course, it's a real pity that... Uh, Ben cannot make it anymore and I don't know uh, did Ben uh, ever visited an ex party I don't know actually no, we don't uh, know I've yet. only been to uh, two of them before so okay I don't think he did hmm well, no, he yeah. was more into the music side of things anyway so yeah no I don't think so yeah no no, no. but 
Uh, I just had a thought. Maybe I can get in touch with Ryan and see if we can do something together on stage for a couple of songs. Hmm. That would be nice. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. I'll see what he thinks. Because, yeah, because well, he's playing there anyway, isn't he? Uh, he is, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, what he usually does is, is it's a one-man setup. So, um, yeah, I'll have to talk to him. Yeah. See what he thinks. Hmm. Well, we're looking forward to that. And once again, thank you for calling in and uh, it was great to hear you and wishing you all the best till we meet and the same to you and we'll see each other in four weeks yeah thank you very much thank you have a nice evening <laughs> and you take care take, take care, care. Bye. bye 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 <laughs> <laughs> nicola zunino and uh, answered uh, that question that you had to uh, for marcel uh, message for ben easy Thanks, man. You made my child childhood. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, people, you can uh, still forward <coughs> such messages through us. Probably, if there's anything like his spirit around here, then he might hear it. So, and now we have to carry on because, uh, well, there are yeah. important people uh, yes. on our schedule, and of course, we have to stick to it somehow. Uh, it would be difficult, but we will try. Uh, so we play now uh, Martin Lund's request, which was an original. Sid made by Ben and it's uh, called Terramax so now we carry on with this and after that we uh, speak with Colin who was well really close to Ben
So this was Teramex made by Ben, an original Sid, and uh, uh, let's make this call. Uh, and uh, the guy whom you will hear is uh, Colin Dooley, and uh, he will talk about uh, a lot of things, highly likely. And his nickname is uh, Fungus, by the way. So um, let's check like, this thing out if it works. Hopefully. Uh, hello, Colin. Hello. Hi. Welcome on the air of Slay Radio. And uh, mm-hmm. thank you for coming on uh, such a short notice. Uh, we <coughs> really appreciate that you can be with us. And uh, could you talk uh, a little about how close you were with Ben? Uh, because then everyone will understand why uh, is your impo- well, why, why is your presence so important? Uh, okay, well, I worked at Gremlin Graphics for about six years. So I'm there, so I, while I was there, I worked with Ben pretty much every day. Uh, I was responsible. When he wrote the music, he needed sort of uh, programs to play the music on Spectrum and Amstrads and things. So I was responsible for writing all the code he needed. Hmm. And we also worked, uh, you know, anything he needed, you know, I was there to. Uh, Kind of, kind of help him do it. Nice. So, and apart from that, you know, we were friends, so we would go out for lunch together, we'd go around his house after work, things like that. And yeah. then we're, even we're, after we we both left Gremlin and we both ended up by kind of a coincidence working in the same office for another two years after that. <laughs> so then it was just me and Ben in the same room together. When, when was so, this? <coughs> this was about... 1990. Yeah. We were working on a 3D graphics project together. Oh, cool. Mm, already yeah. in 1990, that's something. Sheffield. So basically, yeah, we spent um, a lot of time together. Wow. Over the years. I guess you have a lot of memories and uh, <coughs> I regret that we have a short time frame here, of course, but uh, if you would share some of the favorite ones, maybe, <laughs> just in a nutshell. <laughs> Favorites, I don't know. There's so many. I mean, Ben was always a very, you know, whenever Ben came into a room, the room became more interesting because he was always doing things. He never kind of stopped. He was always a very kind of active person. Mm -hmm. So he would be, you know, there was nothing to do. He would be picking things up and spinning them on his fingers and (laughs) (laughs) just, you know, start messing about or start making sounds on something because he always carried a little, like a whistle with him as a little flute or something to play music. (laughs) Fun. (laughs) <laughs> so he never, he kind of never stopped <laughs> playing music, and he was the kind of person he would always, you know, he he would always teach you things as well. He would always be explaining things and, you know, kind of passing along his knowledge. So he taught me a lot. Kind of, a, I can think of many, many things that Ben taught me how to do. Um, just stupid things like how to play backgammon. Ben was the guy who taught me to play backgammon and, hmm. and many other games. He was a big. Um, he liked to play cards, so every day he would go back to his house, and uh, like a bunch of people would come around, and they would all play cards together and drink tea. Cards and um, tea sounds very <laughs> British. <laughs> <laughs> Contract bridge was his favorite game. Uh, so whenever there was four people, that would be the game to play. You know. <laughs> drink nice. tea and um, and smoke a little bit of um, hashish as well. He was a big fan of that. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you know. Yeah. <laughs> no secret there. In fact, I can tell you, the first time I, when I first met Ben, I think, um, when I started working at Gremlin, they didn't have a musicians working there, so they would call people in. So um, Rob Hubbard would come in with his music for a game, or Ben would come in. Or I'm not sure if Martin Galway came as well. He did some games. <laughs> so one day Ben came in, and he was with Tony Crowther. I think, and I don't know exactly how it happened, but after work we all went, um, so Ben and Tony wanted to go and buy some hashish. Mm-hmm. So we, we went to a very bad part of Sheffield to, to buy some, which I'd never been to before. <laughs> it, was, it was just uh, me and Tony and Ben. I think that was the um, first time I met Ben. <laughs> yeah, so we went nice, up to this... Uh, nice introduction there. <laughs> very bad part of Sheffield. <laughs> <laughs> to buy drugs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh my 
well. <laughs> but then, yeah, eventually Ben, he got the job working at Gremlin. I think we, there was a big argument with Rob Hubbard and Rob Hubbard said he would never work for Gremlin again, so... <laughs> I remember that, that day, there was a big fight in the office. And soon after that, Ben, um, they gave Ben a job there, so Ben was there every day after that. He had a little office full of keyboards and speakers and amplifiers and things to do his music mm -hmm. and computers. And I was in uh, the office next to him, so we would be uh, back and forwards the whole time. Because mm -hmm. I was working with Ben. And I heard um, a story, just uh, in a nutshell, uh, that <laughs> did he get fired because of reading a newspaper? <laughs> Is this true? <laughs> no, that's not true. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, he, was, um, he always read the newspaper. I think every day he didn't. Uh, he didn't have a television. He never watched television. Said it was a waste of time, which I agree with. I don't oh, have totally. Mm -hmm. Either, but every day he would buy the Guardian newspaper, and, and he would do the crossword. And he would sit in his office and do the crossword a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Try to finish it. I don't know if he ever finished one. <laughs> but every day he would try. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, that, those are really interesting things. Probably we could never <laughs> hear that from anyone else, I guess. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so he loved yeah. crossword puzzles. Hmm. Yeah. Well, and, yeah, anything like that, really. He would be... It's kind of intellectual things. He would like to, to do it. Um, it sounds yeah. like uh, next to the cards and tea, you might have like, some philosophical nights as well. Like, you know... Uh, all uh, wandering about uh, life through an entire Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, he would read a lot of science fiction books as well. And oh. he would always have some big idea in his head that, you know, if we could um, we could make a machine that could read your brain waves and then pass them to another person that would be like um, artificial telepathy or something like that. And he would go on all night about, you know, we could, you could just think and other people would know what you were thinking. And, Ah, Maybe that's, some, that's uh, a very exciting topic. Some, yeah, it's, it's, things like this, they will, they've always been doing thinking yeah. things like that. They actually made a movie about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, probably. Well, late 90s or something, I think, or early 2000s. You could mm -hmm. uh, record your memories and then... Ah, uh, that was in the 80s, that film. Uh, that that movie we watched ah, together, right. yes, it's from 83. And uh, you could uh, record your memories and oh, your... No, that's not the one. I, not um, the one, sorry. Uh, yeah, um. it's another one. So, yeah, but that one was earlier, yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, parts of those things are <coughs> getting more and more real. And I really regret that uh, Ben co cannot see probably where how far they will go because uh, we recently read an article about that uh, uh, remotely controlling uh, with brainwaves uh, Tetris game some sort of thing so yeah I think I saw that yeah yeah so pretty soon we will have have that sort of thing yeah it's yeah. already happening yeah. <laughs> we could do uh, radio without actually talking we just <laughs> sit and transmit thoughts <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be no. my thoughts about Ben. <laughs> exactly. Over the over the internet. Yeah. <laughs> that would be no use anymore for any yeah. radio. <laughs> the other end, you just jack in and uh, get <laughs> yeah, your feelings like about Ben. <laughs> you would lose your jobs. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, what else can I say? I mean, he was always he was always obsessed with music as well. Um, I mean, he could play many many instruments, like keyboards and guitars and flutes. And uh, have you and seen him perform on the stage as his friend? Um, I've seen him play in, play in orchestras. He played in an orchestra. He was a um, percussionist. Uh -huh. So he would play. He was he was big in classical music as well. I mean, he knew all classical music, and he even he sometimes he conducted an orchestra. So he did. He knew um, everything about you know, classical music. Mm -hmm. He knew everything. So we hmm. heard about that too. And there was other talents. So I remember one time he was playing, I don't remember the piece, but he was playing um, the drums in a, a big orchestra and it came right to the end of the music and he had to play some really loud sort of da -da 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 drum sound. Yeah. And on the very last note he went, he hit the drum really, really hard and the stick broke, okay, and it was a stick <laughs> with kind of a ball on the end of it 
to do it. And the ball bounced high up in the air, right, uh, like two or three meters in the air, and came down and hit the drum. Perfect timing. <laughs> it was like the, the end of the the end of the concert. Ben he like hit the drum. The head went flying right up in the air, two or three meters. Everybody saw it, and then it came down and went. But um, and that was the end of the the concert. <laughs> it was perfect ending. That is indeed very perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that if we could film that, it would be you know an yeah. internet meme. Oh, definitely. <laughs> and everyone, sure. everyone would try to do the same. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Um, I don't know. Does anybody have any questions about Ben? You know, maybe I can. Oh, that would be awesome, actually. Um, uh, Pete questions and answers. Pete Frith uh, says, uh, "Colin, I'd forgotten uh, he used to do that all the time. He used to do that at Alligator too, picking stuff up, uh, up and playing with it." Yeah, uh, he would spin it. He had a briefcase, and he would spin it on his finger. A briefcase? Yeah, like, yeah he, he would carry a. It was a, like a briefcase with stuff in it. I don't know what was inside. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he ever opened it. But he could put it on his finger and just spin it around like that. And he would walk around spinning the briefcase on his finger. <laughs> cool. <laughs> he, could, he, could, he could spin it. He had a thing about he could spin anything on his finger. He would like pick him. Because he played a lot of uh, frisbee as well. Ultimate frisbee. Yeah. Do you play that in Sweden? Yeah, we do. Okay, so um, yeah, we had a team. Oh. Um, some people from Sheffield. I was on the team with Ben. We would play against against Derbyshire and things. Very amateur, but uh, <laughs> you know, he he liked to uh, he liked to play that as well. Mm. Nice, indeed. Yeah, I've only tried it once. So he never. He basically he never stopped. He was always you know doing something, and you know, making making pe- other people's lives more interesting. He couldn't sit calmly. <laughs> No. Mm-hmm. Looks like not even for a minute. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I'm impressed with all the people who managed to get photos of him actually, <laughs> because he was always moving. <laughs> <laughs> Why did it uh, get blurry? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, well, many of mine did. <laughs> yeah. The motion blur. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Indeed, um, I f- I'm sure that we might uh, still get some questions. I don't know. Uh, will you stick around for the evening, or you have other mm-hmm. duties to do? I think I have to go out to dinner at about nine thirty. Um, I see. Let me just okay. check. Let me just check on Skype. Okay. Um, I'm just typing here, so if you can hear key presses, that's what it is. Yeah, maybe we could uh, relay some questions to you on uh, <laughs> s- uh, Skype. Yeah, that, that was my thought them, as well. If we yeah. get them in, <coughs> in um, through other means. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Pete. Okay, Pete. Not, uh, can, uh, not, it's no, not fixed yet, so I can stick around for a bit. So a bit longer, Pete, maybe. Pete Frith says, I think he did that with an Atari ST once, spinning it on his yeah, finger. Sure. <laughs> yeah, anything. Commodore 64, Atari ST. <laughs> anything. So he made the world spin. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anyway, yeah, so, yeah, I was really sad to hear the news the other day. I was on Facebook and um, his wife, Sarah, who I know as well, um, she posted the news that Ben had died, uh, apparently from lung cancer. Yeah. Um, so, well, Ben always used to joke when he was, um, I mean, back in the 1980s, we always used to say, oh, you'll get lung cancer and things. And Ben would say, oh, no, not me. When I'm, by the time I get lung cancer, you know, they'll have all these amazing medicine and it'll be like a cured mm. yeah. thing. So, quite ironic that uh, well. it was that got him in the end. Hmm. Yeah, it's a pity. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Too young, way too young. Indeed. Uh, so, so 50, I, some fifty, fifty-two, fifty-two. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She, uh, he was fifty-two. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So same as me. Yeah, Ma- March nineteen sixty-six. I think he was born. Sixty-six right, so for I'm sure. Sixty-six. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, indeed. So uh, uh, only oh. if you only if you stick around, because uh, don't reorganize your plans only because of us. But uh, if uh-huh. you if you are around, uh, we might relay some questions uh, to you through Skype what? chat. Uh, if you are okay with that, uh, yeah, sure. 
And if uh, I go out, I'll let you know. I'll type. I'll say, okay, I'm going out. So yeah, perfect. But if I don't say of anything, course. assume I'm. Yeah, so of course, of course. So. so anyone who has any questions for Colin, you can just uh, send them through. Uh, fungus. Either fungus, the, yeah. Yeah, fungus. <laughs> fungus. <laughs> fungus that, was actually, that was actually my legal name. No. Back in the <laughs> <80s>. <laughs> okay. Cool. <laughs> So I went on you, Ben. So Ben always called me Fungus, and uh, well, people still do. People who know me from then, I'm always Fungus. So. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Legal name, huh? Okay. Yeah. The MTM added his birth date at 66 and uh, July uh, 31, 30, 31st July. So, ah. right. yeah. Uh, but 66 for sure <coughs> uh, thank you uh, thank you so much that you joined us today evening and uh, wish you all the best and uh, well uh, maybe we will bump into each other in the future at some point uh, you never know <laughs> in this uh, retro scene and mm, maybe yeah <laughs> we will see but uh, we thank you for dedicating your time and uh, and really uh, wish you a very nice evening. If you go out for okay. the dinner, have a great meal. <laughs> and thanks for taking the time. <laughs> Indeed. Okay. And I'd just like to say to Ben, if you're listening, you know, I'm glad to have met you. And uh, I hope you're in a, a good place. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Indeed. Thank you very much once again. <laughs> okay. Have a good night. Bye bye. Okay, bye. All right. Thanks. Mm, bye. Maybe. Oh. Uh, there is an extreme situation here. Um, hello, John. <laughs> we didn't count on that yet, but hi. <laughs> okay, that works too. So uh, we welcome on air John Hare at the moment. Hello. <laughs> hello. Uh, hi, John. Uh, hi. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I intended to play a song, but that's fine too, actually, because uh, we we ha have a really busy schedule for the evening. I think so. Okay, that <clears throat> will work. Uh, how are you today? I'm good. I've been I've been looking at a big, huge list of features and bugs for the social soccer game and working how we're going to fix them all. Uh -huh. Not much fun, but there you go. <laughs> well, but uh, we are glad that you could make it while you are yeah. so busy, <laughs> because. Uh, as I know, the release date is... Uh, it already happened, probably, in China? Oh, my God, the release date was was, was too long ago, but we just keep on <coughs> working on it. We're due to put the game out in um, in China on mobile. in, in uh, No, in Asia on mobile by the end of this month. But there's so much to do, it's scary. And then we've got to obviously look at the, the newer version of the PC build once all these updates are done. And there's a lot to do. Too much work and not enough time. <laughs> oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, we understand. <laughs> <Enough> <laughs> Absolutely, but uh, we are we are glad that you could make it. Uh, Our pleasure, pleasure. And uh, you also have uh, quite some memories with Ben since you were playing with him on stage together, right? Well, yeah, as I've done a lot of stuff with Ben, so. Um, we um we worked uh, together obviously with the music that, that everyone's seen on stage in different gigs um not only with sid 80s but ben uh, has also played with me on different stuff in pixel heaven we played um kind of like a sensible set almost rather than a sid 80s set um and uh we've done uh, various bits together talked about different ideas for different companies even before about rec recording music and saving it in various different ways and yeah he's a he's a one-off guy that's for sure and it's going to be he's not a replaceable person so unfortunately all of us are going to miss him a lot because mm. this is there's no one else like him out there yeah yeah, yeah this is even clearly visible remotely if you haven't meet mm. him ever so yeah, you can just look at one picture and go, oh, okay, it's that type of <laughs> energy <laughs> if you meet him. <laughs> exactly. You know, from from a British perspective, Ben is, is like quintessentially eccentric and likeable at the same time and, you know, um, brilliant uh, person, a very brilliant fast mind, um, a little bit scatty uh, and, uh, yeah, inspiring in general. That's what, That's... You know, he's got quite an infectious, inspiring kind of character. That's what he, that's what he brought. 
So it, it was more than just someone who made some music. It was the energy that came with him that you, that you really remember, actually. Yeah. And uh, well, any particular stories that you would happy to share? Hmm. Let me think. Have I got any stories about but lovely there? memories? Maybe funny moments. <sighs> There's many moments with Sid eighties that were that were really kind of quite nice. Um, a lot of them involved kind of like everyone taking the piss out of each other, particularly <laughs> Mark and Ben. <laughs> <laughs> um, sharing hotel rooms late at night, drinking vodka when we shouldn't have been, um, you know, silly, silly, silly things. Um, I think that him getting very excited, there was this guy called Ronnie Hazel, who was a, a composer for TV themes in the UK, that he was particularly in love with his work. And um, he would happily, like, just, as you've seen videos, we would just start humming the tunes and tapping out rhythms um you know w when he was inspired to you know he was someone who who did everything his own way you know he looked after his kids a lot actually at home you know he, was, he spent a lot of time with his children he he schooled them himself for a time wow and um wow. you know he's very involved with his family um as well so um you know there's a there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of um, uh, nice things and not very many bad things. I don't really remember any bad things with Ben, to be honest. Oh, the worst thing is he stole my tambourine. He's still got it. <laughs> <laughs> In our last gig that we did. Um, no, uh, really, really just an inspiring person to be around. When we did the, you know, whenever you get on stage with Ben, he becomes this larger than life personality and goes into almost a BBC voice. And we did a gig in... Uh, pixel heaven and it, it was a basically a, in poland this is in warsaw this was about two or three years ago it hmm. was a huge 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 area like an old warehouse but it looked like we'd keep air airplanes it was colossal this building hmm. and the stage was at one end and there was like maybe a hundred people but it didn't look very full because there were it was just so big it could have housed like two or three thousand so oh. mm -hmm. ben got ben got everyone to run to the the back of the hall all the audience he told them all go away from the stage run to the back of the hall and then start screaming and shouting and run forwards again to try because there were people outside he was trying to attract them in so he got them to do this two or three times um it's ridiculous you know but he he kind of rallied them into like running around uh like children and screaming which is quite funny uh yeah and this was this was kind of this is kind of what happened you know he when Ben's there, you don't really feel you you need to talk so much on the stage because there's someone to do it all for you. So it's quite quite fun, yeah. Hmm. Yes, yeah, it's, it's incredible that that he had all this time for his family as well, and he had all the energy for the fans, for the friends, for uh, mm -hmm. pals, everyone. And uh, it's just yeah, um, very energetic person. I wonder yeah, if he, he ever slept. Like energy. He's like one of those sheep dogs that runs around and around and around. That's what he was like. Yeah, know? he's uh, full of energy and enthusiasm, and, and suddenly perking his head at something and humming something quickly, and he could pick up tunes in incredibly fast. And you know, I think him and Mark Knight were very close uh, friends. Um, and, and we uh, will we will hear him today as well. By the way, good, so, good, yeah, yeah, he will do a check in too. <clears throat> yeah, it was it was it was really really um, it was really great to have had you know because I didn't know Ben so much when we were younger. We both started in the industry when we were young, but I only really met him when the Sid '80s thing started up properly to pay attention to anyway. And um, um, I think Chris Abbott initially put me in, in, into that group, and yeah, we became really really good friends straight away. Um, I was very lucky he invited me to his wedding, um, which was a couple of years ago. Um, and he wore a, he wore an electric blue teddy boy jacket, effectively. Oh, so funny. oh that's so lovely. <laughs> so, well, I, I went to his reception, actually, to be fair. I didn't go to the actual ceremony, so maybe he, he wore something a little more subdued in the, in the ceremony itself. Um, but yeah, it was... Um, it was um, 
he was just a great person to know you know it was good to meet his family up there he lived up in matlock in derbyshire which is a quite an attractive part of the of the country in uk it's a nice nice old kind of town set in the countryside really derby and, um, you mean right pardon Der Der derby derbyshire yeah 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 oh, and i oh, think ben been very much <laughs> identified with that kind of being from that kind of a place you know like a, a town in a in the countryside somewhere in the north of england i think he kind of i think he kind of liked i think he, he felt quite comfortable where he was and um yeah it's uh and he did a lot of music i mean mark will tell you more about that but a lot of a lot of other music i know mark and ben did together outside of the sid 80s stuff um but it was uh it was you know it was, it's, it's nice to be invited to someone's wedding it's No. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> you, you feel like like a, a. In fact, it must have been in 2000. I think it's 2014. I think he got married. No. Not, not that long sure. ago. Hmm. No. For for a man to remember the details of anyone else's wedding or family is pretty good, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly, I don't remember anything. <laughs> <laughs> Oh well, and we haven't even talked about him musically, and uh, yeah, I regret that we have a limited time frame, but uh, thank you so much for joining us, John, and thank you That's for okay. calling It's in. It's a pleasure. <laughs> It's a pleasure, and I hope the rest of your evening goes very well, and um, say hello to Mark for me when he calls up as well. Okay, yeah. we will. And great to speak to you too as well, as always. As always with you too. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> See oh. you at some point, I guess, in the near future. Yes, yeah, you certainly will. <laughs> okay, take care. Take care. Take Have a good care. night. Bye. Right, bye. Bye bye. bye. Well, um, high traffic today, as yeah. you might have noticed. Uh, we might play some music, I yeah, think. Let's play a track. Yeah, And, indeed. Uh, then come back to some uh, someone else. Yeah, indeed. You had, you had, uh, had some sort of schedule over there, I guess. I definitely do. Yeah. Uh, let's find a some. song. Yeah, um, let's find a song and. Uh, so uh, we will play now Luna's request, which is a remix from Crackout. It's uh, made by Blaster Knox. Uh, it's named Blaster Knox Remix. So I think that's coming up next, and after that, uh, I already know whom we will talk to.
I think this track was as cheerful as Ben was. Do yeah, you agree? It's one of those quirky things that just it's it has the same personality as Ben. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Indeed. So Uh, I guess we got our next caller and uh, we will try how Facebook works in that sense because it's always a kind of miracle. Hopefully it will work. So, yeah, let's... Check the uh, card settings as soon as you start. They should be fine. Oh. Yeah, well, <laughs> and fine. the sound is coming in, so yeah. shouldn't be that much of a problem. <laughs> and we are calling Max Hall. Hey. Hi, Max. Are we able to hear you? Hello. Oh, Hello, we are able Max. to hear you. That's excellent. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Welcome on air of Slay Radio. Uh, how is your evening? Well, maybe he can't hear us. Um, that's a great <laughs> question. Let me check the settings again, because it seems like Facebook is... Uh, uh, it's replacing the the settings, indeed. Meaning uh, that it's... E yes. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, hello there. Now, how are we there now? Surprised. <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, very impressed that that actually worked. Wow. Yes. Yes. Now, now you can hear us too, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope so. Apparently not. Apparently not. Okay. Let's do this again. Uh, hi. Can you hear us? Hmm, that's a funny thing. Uh, okay, uh, we uh, might... Hey. What? You have it muted on the top one. Uh, yes, but that's not the particular one that we might need now. Uh, can you hear us now? Hi? Oh, we heard him for a while. I do, be I do believe there's a bit of a lag on this link. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if you listen to the stream, then there would be a lag for sure, and you should probably. I can hear you fine. Uh huh. Oh. Okay. Uh, so you hear us now, maybe. Uh, now maybe a reattempt. Re I don't know. Can we make this work? <laughs> It's funny. Uh, well, we work with several sound cards, and Facebook call is not the. Uh, usual thing that we do so makes it a little bit more complicated well trying to change device uh, not yet hello hi hello sorry about that yeah. hi <laughs> uh, okay uh, I wonder if the listeners are hearing us now D do you hear us now and once again maybe <laughs> I can hear you now Okay. <laughs> Hello. Are Hi. you sure? <laughs> okay. Is, is this is this working in real time? <laughs> uh, we don't know. Uh, it's there supposed might be to be working in real time, yeah. <laughs> I, I I think it is this time. Sorry uh, about that. I don't uh, know what happened. Yeah. I think it was feedback from me listening to your stream. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. That that <laughs> might be a <laughs> little bit of bother. Yeah. There, it's like yeah. a twenty-second delay. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, never mind. Uh, finally, we sorted out. Yeah. So now you can hear us loud and clear, real time, without any delay, right? Yes, no problem. Oh, okay, <laughs> excellent. excellent. <laughs> so, once again, welcome on air of Slay Radio. Thank you. <laughs> and how is your evening? <laughs> Very <laughs> well. Yes, a few technical problems, but I think we've resolved those. <laughs> yeah, got there in the end. Yeah, you indeed. Are. It, it works in the end. It always does. It does, yeah. <laughs> Just need to be persistent. Yeah, indeed. No, no, no. Yes. <laughs> oh, so, uh, would you describe your connection to Ben in a nutshell? Um, <laughs> good question. <laughs> or not in a nutshell? Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> I haven't got any notes. <laughs> um, oh, but, but just working with Ben, you, you get an instant connection, basically. Uh, like John said earlier, when he walks in a room. It, it just shines and and he brings the aura with him and um I, I think that connection is working actually in, in a studio environment with ben that that, that 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 i like a lot yeah and i'm gonna miss a lot yeah um, so yeah probably answers that one for you <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, many people will miss him, and uh, as we hear it, uh, he was definitely a personality as its best. So indeed, yeah, yeah, but so full of life. Great guy to be with, just, just happy. You know, he's happy with life, and uh, that was great. It was so inspirational for everybody that had contact with him. You know, um, that's what I'll always remember about him. And I'm just a very small part of Ben's life. Uh, but there's so many people that he, he he's touched and taught and inspired. For, for, you know, he's just an incredible guy, basically. Yeah. Just. Uh, you were working with him for a while as well, right? Musical wise. Yeah, we we um, well, I first worked with him on on the Bedrooms to Billions project. We did a little bit of further music for the soundtrack for that, and uh, that was the first time I actually worked directly with Ben. Yeah. Uh, but I think we've been corresponding on email for a long time before that actually happened. Um, but yeah, it was the first time I actually personally got together with him in the studio. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've met him before at events and things like that. But uh, yeah, to actually get him in a, in a situation where we could actually discuss something I like that the, may happen. Yeah, I, I like the uh, clip from uh, Bedrooms to Billions with uh, you and Ben kind of uh, playing through some of the uh, oh. his SIDS and whatnot. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean uh, I'm, I'm so grateful for Anthony and Nicola for sharing that, to be honest with you, because I forgot all about it until the other day I got an email from from Ant saying here, have a look at this um, I think we ought to put this out as a tribute um, apparently Rob Hubbard had uh, asked Anthony to do it uh, as, as well, which is a nice, uh, nice tribute from Rob there um, and yeah, t- t- it was great. I, I forgot all about it, and t- t- to sit there and watch it, very moving. I, lo- I love the bit where he picks the guitar up and starts doing a bit of, yeah. a bit of trap. Yeah. <laughs> well, the guy's not played it for thirty odd years, and we're just sat there. And you've got to bear in mind this was after a two-day studio session as well. Um, Anthony just managed to catch Ben as he was going, and uh, he sat there with a nice cup of tea. Yeah, like behind the scenes uh, kind of footage, I guess that yeah. was. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's really nice to be able to put it out there as well, let people see it and, you know, see Ben how he really was. You know, a really charismatic, very intelligent, you know, great to be around person. You know, it's, that's all I can say, you know, really, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a character, all right. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> And working with him must uh, feel the same, even if uh, you said that it was for a short while. But yeah, yeah. Um, we, we did a few little other things as well together, which I'll, will get released shortly as well. A few few carrot danglers there. <laughs> um, it will be even more valuable right now. So yeah, we are looking forward yeah. to it. I mean, there's, there's a lot of it that will never get released that we work together on, but because it's just ideas you know I'm just messing about and stuff like that but <coughs> excuse me no, no doubt about that yeah we all will <laughs> indeed if you could pass a message to him what would you say mm. so I'll see you soon my friend Um and I'm sure you're having a good time wherever you are because you're a good person and uh, you'll, you'll be cool where you are mate as cool as you have been down here <laughs> wherever he is he's gonna make it cool <laughs> oh indeed <laughs> <laughs> he brings th- joy to everywhere so it, 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 never a dull moment <laughs> really that's, that's how I remember Ben and that's uh, that's how a lot of people remember Ben <laughs> indeed yeah. Yes, so yeah, very heartwarming words and uh, well, I don't know. Um, do you have any anything specific uh, on mind still, like uh, fractions of memories or uh, lovely stories? <laughs> <laughs> I think they. I think well, I've got a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Before I actually even met Ben, I've, 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 I'd always wanted to work with him, and I, I was in a electronic band at the time and uh, we were you know we're doing all right 
But I always wanted to work with Ben and I wanted him to come and do some work on one of our tracks. <laughs> so, cheeky email, just sent it and found out where, where his email was, just sent it. But unfortunately, <laughs> I ended up in hospital that had a bit of a minor accident and uh, while I was in there, Ben Daglish phoned me to and showed interest in working on this track and that was a, a missed opportunity that I <laughs> was cheesed off about at the time, let's say. <laughs> but fate kindly gathered its its legs and uh, we ended up working together anyway. But uh, yeah, that, that, that's a, a weird memory, that one. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have mobile phones then. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. right, of course, yeah. <laughs> we cannot that, imagine no. that already, but <laughs> <laughs> there were times when there were no mobile phones, not even phones. Yeah, or MP3 players. <laughs> Aww. Oh, it was, it was a much better world, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Ben would agree. I, I think he would, yes, yeah. intensely. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, who, was oh. that, who was that that said uh, he didn't even watch TV? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I can't fault him for that. I'm exactly the same. Ah. <laughs> yeah. So, there you go. Great yeah. minds. <laughs> uh. Yeah, uh, the greatest minds don't watch TV. That's a proven fact, <laughs> actually. <laughs> so. it, it does help. <laughs> they have more important things to do <laughs> and create. No <laughs> oh, thank you so much for uh, calling in. Uh, even if we have just a short while, unfortunately, but uh, no problem. It was great honor to have you on air and. Uh, we wish you all the best and uh, a great evening and uh, and uh, I guess we will bump into each other virtually or who knows maybe in Indeed. real life as well <laughs> at one point so uh, wishing you all the best uh, yes and yes, thank you very much for that and it's, it's been a great show cheers <laughs> thank you bye 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 oh um, Fungus just sent a picture here saying uh, he has a CD of uh, music or Ben music that nobody ever heard. Ah. Indeed, and, and he had also a request which I'm going to schedule soon, probably. Uh, yes, uh, probably, I guess it was him. Yes, uh, I'm a bit confused because we have like so many, so many things to pay attention to now, but we are trying. Uh, now I think we might play a request and after that we can welcome our next caller who happens to be Mark Knight for a surprise. And uh, the requester is Spawatch this time and he wants to hear Hazel's The Wilderness Remix of Last Ninja. Good choice. Let's fight this out up on the hillway. But let's skip the phone. 
There we go. And let's see if Mark is around. He should be. Hi, Mark. Hopefully. Hello. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Well, very much hopefully. <laughs> can oh. you hear us? I can hear you fine, thank you. How, how, how are you guys doing? Ah, oh, thank you. Uh, we are fine. Uh, we were a bit nervous, uh, but uh, it's uh, getting settled, so it's, it's all fine. It's a good thing you're doing, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, everything seems fine. And uh, well, you were also uh, close with Ben. We can say so, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't know Ben before um, before the whole back in time thing. To be fair, um, I'd met Rob before because we worked at the same company. Um, but I was pretty much introduced to Ben as a as a as a man rather than a myth um, back in two thousand and one, I suppose. Um, and uh, then, of course, the the Sid eighties thing happened. Um, and uh, we just connected. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, he's an infectious personality anyway. I mean, <laughs> you, you can't help but love Ben. Um, <laughs> but yeah. I, I, Reoccurring I I was, theme tonight. <laughs> sorry, say that again? Reoccurring theme tonight. Well, I, he was awesome, wasn't he? On, on so many different le levels. He was an amazing music, musician, a fantastic person. He was extremely clever. Um, and he, his mind was a was was a was a gold mine of, of information, um, and there was just something um, you, you know you, you you play with musicians if you're a musician you you perform with musicians throughout your whole life, um, and then once in a while you meet somebody and perform on stage and something really really special happens and. Uh, that's what happened with, with Ben and I. Um, yeah, kind of speaking to each other through our eyes whilst we're on stage, there was never any any need to really talk to each other because we kind of knew what each other was thinking and I mean, not so much with the, with the Sid 80s stuff because that was quite um, scripted, I suppose, in what we, in what we did. It, it had to be because um, it, it's not like we could rehearse different different ideas um so it was very much you know this is this is how we're going to do it and this is what we're going to do um obviously sedati's mucked up things so, so many times <laughs> there was still a lot of improv but uh, you know, the, the, some of the things that ben and i did out outside of outside of sit which, which was more kind of in the folk folk rock sort of scene and there's a lot of improv there and a lot of working together and of course when you have two melody instruments more than often the last thing you want is two melody instruments playing at the same time playing two different <laughs> two different melodies um and uh we just had this connection uh we knew what each other was going to do when they were going to do it and then we kind of um worked around each other um aside from the personal stuff of him being a mate, and, and I, I'm quite an unsociable person, really. I don't have many mates, um, not <laughs> proper proper friends, if you know what I mean. And and Ben was one of those. Um, but I, I'm gonna so miss just that absolute buzz he gave me um, when we were both on stage together. Mm. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's a bit crap <laughs> to say the I, least um yeah I, i'm just a bit I, i'm personally a bit pissed off with myself at the moment um because i mean ben ben came down to see me in in 2015 when he when he got um diagnosed and I, I didn't know um and pretty much the evening started off talking about that which was well, you can you can imagine, um, uh, but then kind of, we quickly moved on to drinking and music and had a fantastic time. Yeah, indeed, I, I, I put I, I captured some of it on video, which I I, I I kept to myself, but I stuck it on on social media a couple of days ago, part of that evening because he was on a massive high. He was sitting there talking 
about Weather Report and, and he got into one of their songs and he was singing it and he was getting so, so into it. And it's like, I've got to video this because having spoken about the the, the Big C um, and the realisation really that um, I don't know of anybody who's actually survived it in the lungs, um, I kind of captured it just to for me to remind myself of what it was like and then obviously when it, when he did go i thought actually no because it's it's just another little snippet of something that will make people smile um more than anything i yeah, think um, that, the small bits and pieces from different people and you hear these stories you, know, you kind of get a, a more complete picture of the person Oh God, yeah. I mean, I, I I remember. I can't remember where the gig was now, um, but I, John mentioned it that you know, it, even in the eighties, we, we do a little bit of you know, you, you take the piss out of each other and you muck around, and, <laughs> and we're all comfortable doing that. Well, we we did this gig, and I mean, I, I love Ben to death, and I I love his whistle to death, but sometimes it really really got on my nerves. <laughs> because <laughs> it was just so sometimes it was just so bright and in your face and if you had a headache as well you know so we we did this gig and uh i, I kind of sabotaged his whistle <laughs> and i stuck sellotape over it <laughs> <laughs> so, so he wouldn't get a sound out of it and, I, I mean he took it really really well um and it was a laugh and and you know he he left it sort of like 15 minutes or so and then we were mid-song and he snatched my bow out of my hand um, so that I, I then couldn't um, carry on playing either um, and th that was that was yeah that was yeah that was just just him you know and I, I totally agree with Ben I think it was Ben um, that um, there isn't and there won't be another person like him the, 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 the sort of like the eccentric gentleman who is also utterly utterly captivating when in front of a stage and as a front man as a compare and um just the things that he'd come up with in the spur of the moment you know something goes wrong so it gets audiences to to do multi-channeled acapella tunes um splitting audiences up into different sections and getting them to sing different bits and that um, oh, yeah. it was it was amazing <laughs> We had one evening where he spent the whole evening um, talking to me about um, the fact that, uh, it, well, uh, this conspiracy theory that Paul McCartney died in the 60s and he was replaced by a body double. And he brought out this, this website and they they had these um, facial captures where the, they, they look at the, the, the size of the nose and the, the, the distance between the eyes oh, and, God. And, how, and, and how that never changes as you grow older. You know, your face may get bigger or smaller, but your eyes stay in the same place and your nose stays in the same place. And he was showing me how these, these two different poles um, ha had completely different facial features, um, which was quite, <laughs> quite interesting. But I, 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 I'd say to sum, to sum the guy up, um, and this, this is—I I didn't write a lot on faith on social media about it because my my feelings are, are, are a lot more personal and private about it. But the one thing I said, and this sums Ben up for me, um, was that I feel like uh, uh, he's the, the most alive person that I have met, even when he was dying. Mm. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, but you made a point here, absolutely. So you know, and, and he fought it. He fought it. He fought it well, um, and it came as a it, it, it came as a shock, I suppose. But I must admit, his replies to messages kind of petered out over the last couple of months. And uh, I know I meant to go to this festival, and I, I can't remember why I didn't. Just real life, you know. Um, I saw a photograph of him um, at Stainsbury F Festival, which which he he plays at every year with with Losco State Opera, and and he's one of the main compares there. And and I saw the photograph, and I said to I said to Hedia that that I, I need to go and see him because what I saw didn't look so good. Um, and then I never made it, you know. Um, mm. But but yeah. Anyway, that's that. And now I, you know, and this is what we all need to do is is think about 
the fact that this person came into our lives and spread sunshine and you know nothing does last forever but i i'm happy to have had those years of sunshine rather than not have had them if that makes sense you know absolutely perfect sense yeah that's a really good closing thought i guess so and a good advice for the future for anyone who is hesitating to do anything that uh, I, really anything wants. like that anything yeah. like that because just as you know i smoke and and, and like um I, I found out a little bit later than uh, a lot of people because I, I don't hang around social media that much anymore. And luckily, it was it was a friend of mine who sent me a message because I'm glad I didn't read it as a as a, a public post. Um, and um, oh god, I've lost my train of thought now. What was I going to say? Um, oh bollocks! Yeah. Mm. Well, um, yeah, he's he's great, and yeah, love him to bits. Yeah, yeah, uh, and I guess it's beyond words, so yeah, we wouldn't rub your time with that because uh, we understand. <laughs> oh, sorry, yes, yeah, smoking, yes, yeah, so I spent the whole evening... Oh, okay. Tra- tra- ...train smoking, because my mate died of lung cancer, and uh, and now I'm starting to ask myself questions and thinking, okay, I'm 45, Ben was 52, um, And if I knew now that I was going to die in seven years smoking, or if I was going to die in 17 years if I didn't smoke, then I'd choose the the um, the 17 years. So I, I think I need to do something about that, and I think everybody else else does need to do that, do something about it as well, because it will catch up with you. Let's not forget RJ, you know Richard Joseph. Yeah. Ten years ago, he died, and I th- I think he was pretty close to 52 as well i think so um, yeah shocking so and, uh, it, you won't you it won't go you know hmm. and this is a, this is a this is a reminder to all of us really it seems like and, you know, poor kids it's an encoded thing in human nature i guess uh, just today i read an article that we have about 12 years to change our approach to planet earth because if we don't yep. do that Uh, there will be serious consequences and since it's you know uh, seven years or 12 years they are not really a distance in time that we look forward to and we don't plan ahead that much no, and that's a problem know, as, as we get older everything gets quicker 12 yeah. years isn't that long not yeah. for a 45 year old anyway <laughs> <laughs> that is very very true uh, speaking of smoking i smoked as well and then in february i was uh, on my way home Uh, from work and smoked a cigarette as I usually do or did and when I, uh, I smoked the last one and just decided that that was the last one and haven't That's smoked great. since and yeah. I'm so I mean, glad I mean, you did <laughs> I, I, I don't want to piss on your fire um, but um, Ben gave up um, two or three months before he first got diagnosed hmm. um, so The, the 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 earlier and, and I you know I'm saying this and then I I, I guess I'm going to have to fucking do it myself now um, but it, it's it's you know just just stop <laughs> just stop as soon as you can yeah We exactly it's a, it's uh, not uh, it's stupid to play the odds oh mm. it's very stupid but we're all invincible aren't we until we're not yeah, exactly indeed indeed so well. Thank you so much, Mark, to be with us uh, today, and uh, to you're welcome. To just be- enjoy the enjoy the music, enjoy the music, and that will just put a smile on your face. Oh yeah, yeah. and uh, the upcoming track uh, is definitely connected to you because it's gonna be uh, back in time live London and Deflector made by Sedatis. <laughs> so. <laughs> It was a request and I'm going to introduce it soon but first I'm going to say you good night and once again thank you very much. Yeah, uh, good night and 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 sorry for everybody's loss on this. Yeah. It's, a, it's a big loss and love love to the family, love to his family. Indeed. All our love towards them but for them it's the most difficult anyway so. Yeah. Indeed. So uh Yeah, take care and uh, see you at one point, I guess. Uh, well, there'll be another back in time of some shape or form or a retro vision or something, won't there? Can't, well, there can't will be in forever. the weekend now. <laughs> yeah, next weekend Indeed. will, you be, will yes. you be in Bergen? Well, have a good time. Oh, no, he, w- he wouldn't be, I guess. <laughs> he says have a good time. 
<laughs> you wouldn't make it. Oh, so still, you can get a last minute ticket, you know. It's just, it's just on Friday now, so <laughs> it's oh, two sure. days away. Uh, free, sorry, three days away. Yeah. I'll start running now. <laughs> okay. See you there. <laughs> See you. <laughs> Good bye, night. Everyone. See you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 Okay, so Mark Knight, and now uh, we're going to continue with uh, Madman's Request. And after Madman's Request, uh, you're going to hear the first recording of the evening, uh, which was uh, made with Barry White, uh, who also dedicated some time for us, but before the show. Uh, B- Barry Leach, uh, who, who was working together with Ben as well, and he also has some stories to share so now see the 80s and then we continue with the recording material
saying? I mean, God, uh, you know, I've had his one of his fucking tunes stuck in my head my whole life, and it's that stupid rebounder tune. <laughs> Have you heard it? It's just a simple little throwaway thing where he, he does just a little CFG playing up and down the scales, and he does his little flute solo thing, and I, I, I'm sure it was like an hour's work for him. He probably just, ah, eh, fuck it, I'll write a tune and throw it away, but it's been stuck in my head for like 30 years. <laughs> Every time I sit down and, you know, you play around the piano, that's the first thing you start messing around with. He's a very influential composer. Um, I mean, obviously, his works like Trap and stuff, uh, at the time, I remember listening to it and thinking, oh, that's, that's a crazy long piece, you know? And, and it's not until you hear it uh, fully orchestrated that uh, you, you realise this is what it sounded like in Ben's head, you know? The man was really, really a genius when it came to composing mm, mm. indeed you you remember uh, personal experiences as well uh, regarding him or or rather the the music that I, you admire very much i only ever talked to him in the late 80s when i was phoning up phoning rob hubbard and martin galway and ben you know i, I phoned all the composers because there was only three people who were full-time composers at the time and so I wanted to be a composer, so I called them all, phoned them <laughs> up and said, hey, how are you guys doing? I want to be a composer too. And they're like, that's great, kid. Because I was like 14 years old. <laughs> so like, yeah, that's great. Fuck off. <laughs> Did you play them uh, or uh, your SIDS over the phone? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, I'd, I'd send them uh, discs, post them discs and... Then I'd call them back up and ask them what they thought of each tune and stuff. And of course, they hated them because they were terrible tunes. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone starts somewhere. <laughs> I guess you got some good feedback, though. But uh, yeah, was, th those were fun days. I mean, I, I always remember looking up to Ben's work. And yeah, he, he was very, very talented. I mean, yeah. he had... Uh, he Working with Tony Crowther, I mean, he had a great music driver and... I technically knew how to take advantage of that and takes a lot of skill and mm -hmm. 52 52 53 that's fucking way too young yeah. jesus yeah i'm 48 now you know so it's <laughs> it's scary yeah it's no age at all I mean, these I days know, especially i don't know I, I i always thought he was a natural showman after seeing him on the uh on the the, the back in time events and stuff yeah, because hmm. I mean that—that's a real skill to go up on stage and fucking entertain people. I mean yeah. that's, and he was l really soaking it in, living it, and yeah. I guess yeah. that was what he was doing on these uh, folk music festivals as well. So, uh, which is where he spent quite a bit of time as well. So, oh yeah, yeah, well, uh, it, it, it's definitely a, a natural talent to to entertain people like that. Oh, definitely. I know I can't do it <laughs> on stage, and I'm just like, well, how are you guys doing? Yeah. <laughs> but ben, ben engages the audience and, you know, really uh, makes you feel relaxed to be there. I remember that back in Time Live in the, the 2001. Uh, he really, really made everybody feel relaxed because the spotlight was on him. He, he was in his element. Yeah. Mm. Oh, he was born for it. It was just yeah, his definitely. element, really. Yeah, most musicians, it seems like, or are, are, are video game musicians just like to stay quietly in the background in a dark room, you know? <laughs> oh, definitely not. Like, oh, well, it's the stand in the spotlight. <laughs> yeah. So what year was it that you uh, sent him uh, discs and called them and uh, all of that? <sighs> Shit, it would have been 84, 85. Wow. So Six, definitely. Somewhere yeah. around there. So it's straight from the start basically mm. yeah yeah <laughs> cool well i mean I, after hearing you know rob martin and ben i mean after hearing their music i was like that's what i want to do i want to write music for video games because mm. that sounds really cool and better than a real job so <laughs> <laughs> and you did quite a amount of sits actually i have seen that it's like a uh, a lot of them oh yeah yeah i wrote a lot of shitty sid tunes <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Ben that started that sh chicken song thing. Yeah, I, I heard it today, actually. I was going through Ben's stuff, and there's a chicken song in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucker. 
<laughs> Any of the SIDs that you sent him uh, in HVSC nowadays? Oh, probably. There's a ton of shitty ones. Half finished tunes and uh, so. just terrible things. I mean, I was just learning. I was trying to work out how these guys did what they did. Mm. Uh. So it was, I mean, what what they were doing was incredible. I mean, yet having that, n- not only did you have to be a good composer, but you had to technically be able to take advantage of the the SID chip. You couldn't just play, you know, a few notes and have something sound brilliant. It, you had to have that technical skill to to squeeze the drums into the the baseline channel and you know have an arpeggio that. Uh, ben and uh, Rob and Galway, they all uh, did new stuff with the Sid all the time. Yeah, constantly pushing it. It's yeah. ridiculous. It was it, it was always that one-upmanship, you know. Somebody somebody would create a, a new ring mod effect, and some everybody else would copy it. Yeah. I, I remember when when uh, when digital samples came on the scene. You know, some hacker worked out the way to. Uh, to get a digital drum playing <laughs> so of course I, I remember sending that demo to, to all of them and you know every single one of them Martin put it in uh, was it Arkanoid or something <laughs> the, one of the ocean games Rob was hacked it and used it in Skater Die yeah. I don't know if he ever did anything with digital samples did he? No I don't think he did mm. well, it was yeah. good I, I never really yeah. it, all, it always sounded kind of gimmicky to me <laughs> Yeah, they were quite low quality in that sense. But he did. Yeah. Uh, ben did use ring modulation quite a bit. Uh, yeah. And uh, really prominently in uh, one of the last Ninja tunes, uh, Waste, yeah, I was, Wastelands I was listen- or Wilderness, I think it was. I was listening to stuff the other day because I've, I've been doing a remix of Rob Hubbard's Spellbound yeah. uh, for that Project Hubbard thing. Yeah. And he uses a ton of ring mod in that, and that just blew me away because it's like, how did these guys even create this sound? You've really got to understand the, the mathematics behind it. And, and I was listening to one of Ben's tunes, and it was like, oh my god, he's got all this ring mod in there as well. He really knew oh, what yeah. he was doing. Yeah, yeah. still. <laughs> the, the new stuff they can push out of that little SID chip is amazing. <laughs> yeah, I heard some demos the other day, and it's like, how the hell does he even get those sounds? Yeah, it was competition with it. Yeah, you need to go back to your uh, roots and slow it down and figure it yeah. out. <laughs> Find out how they did it. Yeah, mm. it's a sad week though. God, it's ah, uh, it, it bums me out, you know, because I was. Aren't they going to play trap at the the Hull concert? Yep, definitely. Uh, the idea oh, was definitely. the idea was to have uh, Ben himself conduct trap. That would have been brilliant. Yeah, mm. no, I know they'll have done a good job arranging it. The uh, it's hard to conduct. I tried that. They gave me the opportunity to do that down in Peru, and it's it's not as easy as it looks. It, you think it's just yeah, you wave your hand in time with the music, but then you've got to do other stuff with your other hand, and then this hand gets all messed up. And <laughs> <laughs> I still have the. Uh, intro to trap in my head it's trapped in there forever mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got that, that I've got one of the versions from is it kwed.org uh, the, the or, big orchestral yeah. version yeah. and I have that on my phone so it, every now and again it crops up in my playlist in my car it's always good to hear it yeah mm. my forever f- favorite would be Deflector <laughs> which <laughs> I also made the remix of because it's so great <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I did the PC conversion of that. No, and no. Co- I might have covered it. It might be a cover, but then again, it might just be because at the time I wasn't very good, so I would just like take the idea from it. And uh, after Ben got fired, I got to do all the music at Gremlin. Oh, um, Ben got fired for reading the newspaper. Oh no, really? <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> what did it say? You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much because my my old boss James Northern he he worked at Imagitech and then he left and went to Gremlin, and James was a real fucking hothead. He had a real temper on him, um, and people composers generally, you know, when you don't have an idea for a tune, there's not much you can do. If you're empty, you know, you're not going to do anything. So you know, you'll sit and read the paper, and then you'll get an idea or something, or you know, you play a game. Um, and one time at my office, I was sitting playing Populous 
on the on the Amiga because I was trying to hear how the music was done or how the sound effects the soundtrack worked. And James Northern came into my office and he saw me playing Populous and he did his fucking nut. He what the fuck are you doing? I'm fucking paying you to write fucking music, not sit and play fucking games. And he took the disc out and smashed it up and threw it at me. Well, this is the guy that went on to work at Gremlin. And so he's in charge at Gremlin and he walks into Ben's office. Ben's got his feet up on the desk reading the paper. He's like, you're fucking fired. Wow. <laughs> wow. My God. <laughs> yeah. James was... James. James was not a happy camper at times. <laughs> <laughs> no sh- oh, shit. <laughs> wow. Oh my god. Well, I guess uh, Ben didn't regret being fired from such a place. No, I think he was tired of it. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Well, I thought that was one of the things that was always cool about Ben, is that he could just get up on stage and perform this stuff. Yeah, just guitar, you know, flute, whatever. Just give him some instrument and he'll do it. Yeah, that sucks when you've got all these plans and stuff in life, and suddenly it changes. I thought he'd got over the cancer, because I'd heard through the grapevine that he had lung cancer, and then it seemed like he'd beat, beaten it. Mm. But maybe all the medical stuff takes a toll on you. They said it was unexpected, so... Yeah. Mm. like yeah. to think that he burned brightly, mm. like his star burned brightly. Oh, yeah, he yeah. was a like, supernova. It's a good way to put it. <laughs> That period of 85 to 90 or whenever, when he was working at Gremlin, I mean, it was just uh, such a huge time in the games industry. It really shaped it. Yeah. Yeah. It had an effect even like 20 years later. It's amazing. Yeah, it still has in a sort of sense because that was kind of the template for what a software house is going to do. Yeah. In the future, yeah. too. True, true. So. And the whole video game music style. I mean, that. Yeah. Gen- whole genre was defined then it's, yeah he might very well be the first person who was a full-time video game composer he probably definitely was in britain as for the world and maybe one of the japanese guys the one the nintendo guys is possible they were full-time but ben when ben joined gremlin he would have been definitely one of the uh, that must have been 85 i would think or 84 yeah, it was. Now that I think of it, it must have been before Hubbard, because um, Hubbard well, was Rob, kind of. Rob uh, was never employed. I mean, he, he no. was freelance until he went to Electronic Arts. That is very true. He, he, he could be very well have been the first full time video yeah. game composer. All right. Okay. Well, you guys me your day. Once again, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, and uh, thanks. Take right. care. Thanks. And wish you all the best. Thanks, guys. You have a good one. You You too. too. Bye-bye.
So this was Technocop, uh, subtune one uh, for the request of Max Levine. And uh, now we will carry on uh, with uh, uh, also a, well, a well-known uh, remix singer guy. Uh, he did remixes as well. Uh, he's also, he, he has seen uh, Ben several times live. Uh, I think we can say so. And uh, he is probably the best uh, critics in the remix scene with his objective critics. Uh, if you can guess, he is Lala and he also forwarded a uh, message, a uh, recorded message. Here it comes. Pretty cool that you guys are doing this show. Yeah, felt like it was needed. Yeah. I was thinking of asking Necro as well. Necropolo and Ben had mm. uh, been speaking of uh, actually performing live together. So yeah, actually, I had an ex- email exchange with Necro just a couple of days ago about exactly that and yeah, yeah, how sad he felt and how sad I I felt. It was uh, it was shocking to me. I didn't. I had no idea uh, he had uh, lung cancer even in the past. I oh. I, I didn't know. Oh. I did not know. So it I must was, have come like a shock so for you then. It was a total shock for me. Wow. Total shock wow. for me. Um, Did he announce it at one point? Because I don't remember. No, Unfortunately, it was I one of those uh, things that kind of trickled out. He wasn't very yeah. vocal about it because he just wanted to get on with his life, uh, as it life, were. Yeah. So, mm. And he was very active and all of that. So, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. understandable. But still, yeah. that it, that it worsens so fast, and I guess he was hospitalized too this time, mm. and and so fast uh, it it takes him away. It's just not fair. It's just not fair. Mm. Yeah. And he was and he was so ready to to go to uh, to back in time live in in Norway, and I was really looking forward to you know hearing him again, you know, on yeah. stage and everything. Oh yeah, and then it's like. I, is hope, in, in the hope that you can, you guys can actually broadcast this, he was always open to um, to the uh, retro community. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and uh, he was always so so giving um, and everything. And I'm sure if if you met him, Ziona, you would be <laughs> you'd be amazed what a person person he was. Yeah, he looks like from amazing. the photos as well, like very very lively, very uh, cheerful, funny person. I, I wrote this on, on the Remix 64 forum too, but for a long time, you know, especially in the early 80s, uh, Ben Daglish, I loved his music, you know, Last Ninja, Crack Out, Arc Pandora, the Wii music demos that he made with Tony Crowder. So, and I had this image in my mind of, of him, you know, as a younger but British dude. Or reserved and and you know buttoned up and stuff yeah, like that. Smoking t- or tuxedo, monocle. Yeah, well, maybe pipe. not, <laughs> not that stereotypical, but <laughs> something along those lines, right? So when I met him the first time in in 2001, you know, in uh, it was, of course, back then I think he was somewhat in shock too. I think we all were. Because the fans were in shock because, oh my God, that's Rob Hubbard. Oh my God, that's Martin Gale. Oh my God, that's Ben. You know, we were all like, and of course, most of us didn't know each other's faces. So we, we are trying to figure out, you know, who is who. There was no name tags or anything like that. <laughs> we wish we had those. Um, but I think they, at uh, that event, they were in, in shock too. And then I know Rob Hubbard talked about this. And I know Ben Daglish talked about this too, is that, here I am, just living my regular, you know, daily life, and and then suddenly get get burst to this uh, uh, limelight where everybody's asking for your autograph, and oh look, it's Ben Daglish, and everybody's surrounding you and want to mm. talk to you and buy you a beer. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that the first meeting, it, 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 everybody was just <laughs> yeah, wondering what the fuck was going on. Ways, yeah, <laughs> but I think 2002 he already performed with press play on tape and yeah. the CD is yeah. I was, believe so. Yeah, he, and, he was uh, there from day one. So, and then we went on stage and and played his uh, uh, flute and and I think he played guitar too at that time. Yeah, and, and just his on stage presence. He he was so good at entertaining too. Not not just musical wise, but uh, he had a great sense of humor and he was feeling the crowd. And when he saw that you know things were dying down a little, he started to come on, people, you know, let's, let's go, come on, look at this, <laughs> press play on the tape, you know. <laughs> he had this fantastic uh, personality to to rile up the crowd and 
He yeah, seems to, to, be, to be, be hyperactive, even from the photos. Yeah, a little bit. He could never sit still. Uh, it was yeah. uh, He was always moving. It was really hard to get a picture of him. Or, uh, <laughs> let's say, non-blurry picture of him. <laughs> non-blurry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, always energetic and, uh, like you said, very present on stage. Radiating out energy into the room. Absolutely, you could not stand by him and not smile or, or laugh. Yeah, you know, whether at him or with him, either way, he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't care. No, as long as he got got a laugh, he was fine with it. <laughs> exactly. Mm. I think so. Really good sense of humor too, and and he was really good at that situational humor. You know, he, when he sensed, you know, what was going on, and he always had that sharp, witty <laughs> one-liner that he, yeah. he managed to throw in. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, yeah, we yeah. really lost a giant. Um, he, he was. I have a picture of, I think from 2003, but I'm very proud of her. It's, it's, it's a picture of Rob Hubbard, Martin Galway, and Ben Daglish, and of course me lurking in the background. Yeah. Yeah. Those are some of my teenage idols, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think I've, I told you guys before this, you know, if there were posters of them <laughs> back in the 80s, my walls would flat would be totally covered with them. Yeah, <laughs> same here. It's like uh, I don't I don't know what to compare it to nowadays, but uh, like meeting, I guess m- if Madonna was your hero or Lady Gaga, maybe <laughs> or yeah, something like that. Katy Perry or <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know exactly. Uh, that sort of thing. It, it was like huge, huge. That's why it was so weird meeting them because you have this kind of immense respect for the uh, the music they created and then you meet the people and you go <laughs> wow you can actually talk to them they're <laughs> yes, human yes. I, I was totally awestruck in 2001 because even though you are there's rap hubbard or there's ben daglish and you're talking to them in, in your mind is oh my god oh my god it's rap hubbard oh my god oh my god it's ben daglish oh my god oh my god it's ben daglish <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know what to be honest with you to this day my my memories of course, I'm getting old. My memories are fading fast, but my memories of that event have always been felt more like a dream rather than you know something real that happened to me. It was just a euphoric event. Yeah. <laughs> at, at that time, yeah. Aww. Yeah, and we met for the first time there as well. That was fucking hilarious. Exactly. I <laughs> met you. I. That was the first time I met some of the uh, high voltage Sid. Um, yeah, collection Peter, some, crew members, you know, because yeah. we were always just talking on, on email yeah. with each other, of course, and then that was the first time I met some of them <laughs> in person. Yeah, it was literally I flew overseas o- overnight. <laughs> I was there for a couple of days, and I think on the Monday I already flew back. Wow. <laughs> so, so I was literally there for a weekend. <laughs> but it was worth it. It was worth it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the point. You know, whenever I hear sad news like Van Daglish is passing again it reminds me how precious life is how you have to enjoy every day and every minute of it because you just don't know when will it end for you or for someone you love yeah uh, and uh, it's it's a reminder to me to to shake up a little and hey it's not just the daily grind and everything you because everything can change in an instant hmm. and what's your favorite memory of him I don't know it's whenever I picture him I picture him when, I, when he, and he's on stage and jumping around uh, but I think what the, my favorite thing that he ever did was was the deflector Ta-da, <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was totally him and 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 him getting the the crowd going and singing with him <laughs> This this nonsense term that just you know falls perfectly in place in with rhythm and melody and yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he made that one up. I I don't I'm pretty sure he's the one who started that. Yeah, we uh, the the Deo Deo, yeah we discussed this with uh, Ryan Owenhunt and uh, it, it I think Ryan claims that it was Ben uh, that started mm. it and I think Ben claimed it was Ryan. Uh, so okay. uh, we're a bit unsure on the details there. <laughs> uh, either but way, it, was, it worked perfectly. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was one of the bit lives anyway, and uh, uh, one of them uh, kind of 
came up with that and then it just rolled to this day i cannot listen to any remix of deflector yeah <laughs> without <laughs> hearing him <laughs> yell at the, the right moments in the uh, in the yeah. song definitely just one last thing i want to say about ben leglish that he was larger than life he was a legend and i consider him one of the true pioneers of computer game music and uh, computer music in in general and i always had the uh, the utmost respect for these young guys because they were young when they were making all this music but i have the utmost always had the utmost respect for them and especially for ben for doing this and for making so many people happy and quite frankly for launching a lot of people's um, careers whether in computer music or in computers in general just because of of his passion and and his love for the medium so he leaves a large void behind but mm-hmm. i think his 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 memory and especially his music will always live on and as long as I live, I will make sure that you know it lives on. Mm, <laughs> and indeed, keep the flame and, alive. and you made it sure with the track as well. Will you tell a few words about the track? Sure. Um, so I heard the news like Wednesday, or I read it on Facebook, I should say, and I was devastated. I, I came home and uh, did all the family stuff, and I when I finally had some time to sit down, my mind and my soul was was empty it was i I was devastated um hearing the news so out of my desperation i guess to do something i sat down and i started listening to ben daglish songs and i happened on on the hades nebula the first subtune and when i listened to it i'm like this this is perfect this this perfectly expresses of what i am feeling right now so i quickly sat down and, and started finding sounds and, and making this um, this remix and then I figured as long as I'm making a, a band Daglish tribute here I am gonna find some um, samples of his voice and of course I happened up on the uh, back in time live 2003 DVD so I spliced some of that into this remix too and this is what came out of it so mm. thank you very much for the opportunity and uh, and good luck with your show on um, on Tuesday. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much Thank as you. well, and for your time. Anytime, anytime. <laughs> bye bye. See you guys. Bye bye.
a bit bizarre at times. You know, you have a normal, normal, normal life the rest of the year, and then you come down here, and there's 200 Swedish guys going, "Will you sign this for me?" You know. So this was Lala's tribute, um, uh, Hades Nebula, and uh, maybe, maybe it will be available in Archeo soon. We will see. And uh, now we will have a caller, but before that I will forward uh, the message of Jim Bagley, who couldn't make a uh, recording message finally, he couldn't get to it, but he said he was an amazing musician and an awesome showman and a great person who will be sadly missed by all that were lucky enough to meet him so of course he wishes all the best i suppose uh, makka does the same too because um, he he was uh, on the same way uh, struggling with time and uh, now we will have a caller who was referred to before let's look at this if he, we can get him on air it's ringing and now I'm just waiting for him there you go hi can you hear us hello hi hi hello macro hello guys yeah uh, you hear us right uh, definitely so that's a great news because you usually struggle with Skype <laughs> Yeah, Skype uh, doesn't love me, so I don't love Skype. So I see, okay. <laughs> Maybe this time we make an exception, just to make sure that it will work till the end of the call. Hopefully. Yeah, indeed. Uh, so what's up with this planned gig that you would do together with Ben? As we heard it from Lala. It was just a... Uh, um short uh, exchange of messages really uh, he kind of liked our uh, rendition of crack out with uh, Sidrip and uh, he just uh, sent us a message that uh, it was very very funny and very uh, uh, short and simple it was about if you are around my place please uh, ping me and I bring my flirt wow <laughs> okay so, so, uh, and we were shocked because, you know, Ben is a lifelong influence for all of us. And we would never uh, suspect anything, any feedback like this. Yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah, it uh, would be awesome to play with him. And uh, listening to all the anecdotes and uh, the stories, uh, sure, uh, 
i na sebi nam awesome person um, Jack Sparrow of uh, computer music, uh, I mean game music of, of Commodore 64 and I am really sorry that I, I had no opportunity to meet him personally and tell him all this, um, you know, this boring stuff that uh, what uh, effect he had on my life and my uh, way of thinking about music. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, especially that, uh, yeah, you could have uh, got really uh, close to him at one point if this could have happened, but... Yeah, uh, I think we, we would uh, get along quite well <laughs> if this <laughs> happened. <laughs> yeah, even without... Uh, proving it that needs no proof I guess we have no doubt about it oh and uh, I don't really know why now uh, what exactly to ask because uh, you have a lot of uh, childhood memories right that uh, connects you to him and uh, we were talking also in private being emotional a bit uh, which is totally understandable uh, 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 it, I'm not sure that uh, I'm a worthy speaker here because I didn't know him personally, but uh, I can tell you um, some sort of nice uh, story about okay. uh, the effect of his music. Okay. Uh, back in <laughs> back in the 90s, so very very early, uh, it was among my bad uh, ideas to join a music school. I mean, as a student, and you know, there were guys who uh, studied music. You know, this is um, um, in the you know the music school students who were pretty uh, awesome on their instruments, mm -hmm. and uh, some of them were some sort of uh, full of themselves, ever confident and stuff. And I was kind of the quiet guy, just mm. uh, learning stuff that they brought. And one day they asked me to bring some music, and I brought uh, Ben's uh, Crack Out and Jaden Pear. And uh, <laughs> these two songs actually killed the overcast confident uh, students. They tried to play it, and they failed it so miserably. So uh, at the end, they said, No, there's no way we can play this because we can't. Because Ben was such a musical, you know, roller coaster ride. You didn't know what uh, what to suspect the next moment, and he didn't uh, compose by the rules. Uh, it was like a roller coaster with no seat belts mm -hmm. for for a normal uh, educated musician. So I was was pretty happy when when I uh, I could present something that uh, that was so close to me and still. Uh, was it was so alien and so so strange for other people and uh, i think this uh, little moment influenced me a lot because from that point i didn't want to play anyone else's music just mine it's mm -hmm. a kind of a contradiction because uh, we actually make a seat cover band with city alliance but you know this is 64 music that's that's ours so so yeah yeah pretty much so Oh, uh, any well, uh, that's that's a difficult question. But any favorites to to mention or name from him? The, the most influential uh, are probably uh, Crack Out, of course, uh, that we try to cover with Sidip. And uh, I honestly admit that uh, in some onstage uh, events we failed because it's a damn hard track. <laughs> 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 and uh, funnily enough, uh, it started to play as a bad in the background while you were talking about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, um, so many takes. Oh, it, it took so many takes to to <laughs> get in the form. Uh, so it's a really hard track. So it's an absolute all-time favorite of mine. And also Jack the Nipper. Uh, it's I mean, a crazy tune. Less Ninja. Uh, half of my uh, first uh, remix album consisted of Ben's tunes, but unfortunately, by the time I realized that uh, everyone has made Deflector, everyone has made uh, Crack Out, Last Ninja, and other remixes, so I choose a uh, uh, not so often remix tune that was uh, the same as Lola uh, remix mm -hmm. uh, just uh, a couple of minutes ago. I mean, uh, uh, that, that we can hear here. 
So, mm-hmm. so, so yeah, many favorites, many favorites. William the Wobbler, <laughs> actually, it's an amazing tune. Uh, his V Music collection, I love it. So. Hmm. Uh, well, uh, I'm thinking here. Do you want to make a request, perhaps? I lined up something, but uh, we can do that as well. Uh, what did you line up? Uh, Fire Lord by Glenar Brown, a very classic 64 remix, and it was a request as well by a listener. I think it's an adequate choice, so I would go with that. Okay. It's a nice stuff. Okay, and uh, anything else to add, perhaps? Uh, we all will uh, sorely miss him, even if we d- didn't d- uh, have the opportunity I'd like to uh, meet him in person. Because, you know, you lose uh, your childhood hero. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it's, it somehow hits you even if you don't know the person. Absolutely. But uh, that is effect, uh, his good effect on, on all of us, uh, it will remain. Yeah, even if you don't know the person, it still had a great effect on your life. Absolutely. Mm. And uh, just uh, how great he was, that uh, uh, he had such a good vibe that uh, he could reach even so far, yeah. just like here. And so far in time, I can still listen, uh, crack out with a smile on my face. Indeed. And it's in 30 years. 32. 30 years indeed. <laughs> That's really heavy to think about. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, to share those thank thoughts. You guys. It's uh, been an honor. Indeed for us too. And uh, wishing you all the best. Uh, and I'm sure we will meet in the near future with you as well. Even if you won't make it to back in time at the weekend. Unfortunately, I uh, wouldn't, but uh, we will meet somewhere somehow. So, uh, thank you guys. See you. Thank you. Thank See you. you and have a good night. See you. Good night.
Glyn R. Brown and Fire Lord, one of probably one of the most uh, influential and classical remixes out there, and it's just uh, yeah beyond words. Especially that it was uh, born in the first two years of the remix scene. I think mm-hmm. so. It's just uh, incredible. I think. And uh, there we go now, and we will have our next caller just right now with us, it looks like, uh, who is probably the last live caller of the evening. So let's check this out. We are waiting. I just didn't want to bother you with the Skype call sound because it might be annoying all the time. Hello, Andreas. Hello there. Oh, so hi, great hi. to hear you. We are so glad that you could make it finally. Of course. Uh, yeah. Yeah. As, as I told you, I've been home today because my son is sick and he never really wanted to go to bed tonight. So yeah, it course. took a little bit longer than I thought. <laughs> of course. It's, it's like Murphy's Slow, usual stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're counting nice. on that, as I told you, so uh, we were adaptive in that sense that... Uh, <laughs> We, we just uh, set up the schedule and the schedule worked very well actually it started to build up from start of the show so uh, foo, how are you and uh, well can, can I just ask you who have you been talking to tonight uh, ooh, let me let me tell you everyone I don't want to miss out anyone okay. uh, let's see we started with Chris Hulls back uh, after him we had uh, uh, Marcel, I think we had. Uh, uh, well, I already don't remember the order, so uh, excuse me for that. We had uh, uh, John Hare, we had uh, Mark Knight, Colin Dooley, uh, and yeah, and Marcel, I mentioned Necropolo, of course. Oh, good, right. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, uh, well, did I mention everyone? <laughs> pre recorded messages from yes, Lala pre- and Barry Leach. Yeah, exactly. So okay, cool. cool. So far, uh, uh, so you talked to Colin Dooley, didn't you? Yeah, we uh, did. yeah, we we made it, we made it. So, so. and oh, I contacted awesome. everyone whom you suggested. Actually, uh, some of them uh, forwarded some messages because they couldn't make uh, the recorded message part, but. Uh, okay. Also, some of them said that they don't feel really appropriate if they would talk because they rather raise a toast because they don't, well, they were not that close to Ben, but they really sorry of what happened. Yeah, okay. So, uh, and uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to reach Anthony Crowther, but uh, he was the only one who probably, uh, he's not, mm, well, uh, people mentioned before that he is uh, not really talkative on Facebook and in, in general uh, especially true, with true. unknown people so uh, understandable but thank you very much for your suggestions because uh, they helped uh, a lot did, did Colin tell you about uh, his his other name that he had Fungus the Boogeyman oh yeah sure I <laughs> well, mean the fungus, Boogeyman, not boogeyman <laughs> the Boogeyman we didn't uh, heard actually just okay. Fungus no it, oh, it was um I think it was a character in the UK uh, that he changed his name uh, legally to Fungus T Boogeyman. I think uh, <laughs> so that this was this is what he referred his, to by um, legally. His ID said. Wow. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a funny story. Lovely guy. It is, and uh, of course you uh, met Ben as well uh, several times. Uh, when did that start? Was that uh, because of seed eighties, or was that uh, something that started earlier? Oh, let me take you back. <laughs> no. Uh, it started in the 80s, of course, uh, when I fell in love with this music uh, to all the games that I, I w- was playing. Um, and then uh, it was, uh, I think it was a month before the first Back in Time live in, in 2001 that uh, I went to my then girlfriend, uh, went with her to, to London to an, enga- an engagement party and I was in contact with Ben and I asked him if we could meet up and he, um, he invited me up uh, to his house so we spent the day there uh, I don't know, six, seven hours, something like that and um, the, the the fantastic thing about Ben is that, you know, he's the um, he's the perfect rock star 
Uh, <laughs> as you as you say, sometimes you shouldn't meet your idols. Well, Ben was quite the opposite, um, which made me really happy uh, because I was a fan since the eighties, and now I had the chance to meet him and uh, be at his house and and have a private moment with him, which was fantastic. And then, uh, then of course, uh, I met him several times through the. Uh, Back in time live events and of course playing in Sid 80s and and also a few few times privately. Yeah, the, the guys mentioned that uh, sometimes you were going to each other on each other's nerves. <laughs> What did this mean for you? Well, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I. Uh, I, I would say in Sid 80s it was. Uh, me and Mark Knight, we uh, when we were, you know, when we were discussing the the next set list for uh, for our next gig, uh, I was quite. I, I wanted to play new tracks, you know, uh, change up the set a little bit, and then you know, he had his uh, his view on things, and and uh, we well we, we we didn't agree on on everything that's that's for sure but uh i think in uh when when we played on stage and uh it was always it was always really good i think uh sea days was a really cool band to play in because uh i think both ben and um and mark they they come from a, an improv uh background so so that was a, a really good learning uh experience for me uh because i I'm, i really want to be in control i i come from a background where i always know uh what i should be playing when i get on stage uh that was impossible in the 80s <laughs> and, and in the beginning it was quite frustrating but uh, then it you know when when you get into it it's it's just more fun Yeah, I can imagine, uh, especially yeah. we put those two g together, <laughs> the outcome must be uncertain. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's the cool thing. Uh, you know, Ben was the band leader and uh, he he could, uh, you know, if we played a song during rehearsals, that song didn't sound the same when we played it on stage the next day. <laughs> you never knew what was going to happen. and. Uh, but but that was cool because then the audience always got something special. Yeah. Uh, even though we played uh, like Deflector every time, I think perhaps not the first one in in Brighton in 2003. But uh, you know, you always got a, a a special version when they played it. And um, Ben Ben was cool. He was like I say, he was the band leader, and he could go go into a, a flute solo, and then he would do like a spin. <laughs> uh, to get everybody's attention, and then everybody knew that okay, let's move on to the next part. Mm -hmm. uh, so during his solo, you had to uh, do your best to uh, to make the song interesting. And sometimes I failed, and sometimes I didn't. But it was a really good a good experience. <laughs> well, I can imagine. Yeah, uh, it looked like a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it sounded a lot of fun too. <laughs> Well, Kenneth, you've been to the uh, the pre stuff as well, so yeah. I, w I would say that that is also a, a, a huge memory of, of Ben for me because uh, I think it was the uh, was it the bit live in well you, I think it was the uh, 2001. Uh, the he was rehearsing together with Press Play on tape, and that was my uh, really first experience uh, with. Look, seeing Ben picking up, every, you know, any instrument and playing it, like the guitar, he was behind the drums, the bass, keyboard, flute, and all that stuff, and he was all over the room entertaining everybody. So that that was uh, that was that was fantastic to see that kind of stuff. Yeah, and yeah, like you said, the uh, rehearsals and uh, the uh, live performance always different. Yeah, I guess oh, yeah. Uh, the rehearsal is just drill, uh, so you know the song in and out and backwards and forwards and all of that, so uh, you can better follow whatever happens live. Well, uh, let me tell you, uh, like for the the, uh, the the gig that we did in Brighton in 2015, we uh, we actually did one new track, which was fantastic, and that was uh, Parallax, and I think we rehearsed that two maybe three times the day before and then played it live on live on stage so i had no i well i have i had a, a clue what was going to happen because because i know the original song but it was all improv from start to finish 
Um, but that was that was really really cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, I was a bit distracted here. Yeah, it's a <laughs> uh, kind of yes, end of the evening for us. So, well, uh, for me, the most extreme are you falling thing- asleep? <laughs> no, no, he, no, had, he has. Had, uh, I, I had a bit of an accident with uh, Zelda here. She jumped up on the uh, video streaming machine, and uh, it seems to have frozen, but it's still <laughs> st- sending out the stream. So I, I don't dare to touch it. Uh, but then someone else said that it curiosity killed the cat, or the cat or killed cur- curiosity. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Or I killed the cat because it was too curious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he gets uh, very rarely upset to the cat, <laughs> but I think this time it was uh, one of one occasion. So, yeah, uh, the most extreme example for me ever uh, for a band was uh, to hear about an email rehearsal. It's just uh, amazing. I'm fascinated. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. fascinating, really. <laughs> I, I would say I, I think um, I think Ben coined that as well, uh, rehearsing by email because that's that's what we did. Um, and let me tell you how I, I don't know I don't remember the exact details, but let me tell you the story of how Sid Eighties got together. Oh, uh, because I don't think a lot nice. of people yeah. know that. Yeah. So uh, this was. Let me see. Um, in 2002, it was a uh, bit live with, well, there were actually two, but the first one was the big one, and Press Play on Tape uh, played on stage. And I tried my darnest to to play with them for a track or two, but they wouldn't allow me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was so, you know, playing Sid music on, on real instruments is... It's, it's a lot of fun. And I, I decided that I need to put my own band together. And so I got in touch with Chris Abbott and I I asked him if he knew anybody that would be interested in uh, in, in uh, playing in a band, starting a band, doing this. And we were discussing back and forth and I contacted um, Marcel and Rain. Rain! Sorry. <laughs> Rain. <laughs> Rain. Yeah. <laughs> and Chris, I think he contacted Ben and and Mark. So everybody say, said yes. And um, I don't think we, I don't know what happened, but, but we played for the first time in, in Brighton in September 2003. And I knew that uh, Ben had told Chris that if, if this doesn't sound any good, he could opt out to not play. So I guess it sounded okay because we played, you know. <laughs> uh, but, but that was the whole idea. I wanted to do what what press play on tape uh, was doing, uh, because you know when when I could I can go to my rehearsal place and and just bring a couple of sits and, and sit there and play by myself. It's just so so much fun, and it could be from any of my f- you know favorite composers like like Ben of course, Martin, Rob, uh, Fred Gray, Matt Gray. Um, and all the other ones. Um, it's just a fantastic thing to do, and it's also really great to do uh, remixes with, uh, like I've done with Necropolo, for instance, which mm. is fantastic. Indeed. And I don't know if you played Artura that Mackie did, uh, that I also play, played percussion on. That was also really, really cool. Yeah, oh, we haven't played it yet. We, yeah, yeah, we mm-hmm. will. Uh, I'm scheduling it up probably, uh, perhaps. Because I, I'd, I'd really like to hear if you um, did you play because I think Sid Rip they did a cover of Crack Out, right? Oh yeah, yeah. and we, we, played, we played it, it in the background a, yeah, uh, yeah. in the bed uh, as a okay. bad tune before. But uh, uh, well, yeah, you can make a request, of course. So <laughs> yes, I want to hear that, please. Crack Out, uh, okay? Be, because uh, it's. Uh, it's um, it's one of my favorite games and definitely one of the favorite tunes that, that Ben did. And um, it's a little bit hard listening to it now because uh, because of what has happened. Um, but you know, uh, Kenneth, you know, I'm I'm a huge Sid fan and I listen to Sid music every day. But it's it's been a little bit hard the the last week to do it because it reminds me of Ben. Uh, and of course, I'm I'm going to remember him for for the rest of my uh my time on earth but uh um 
well, anyway, I think they did a, a great cover of Crack Out, uh, yeah. and I really like to hear, hear it. And uh, me and Necropola, we've been uh, we've been sending emails or messages on Facebook back and forth the the last couple of weeks, obsessing about Crack Out. So <laughs> I'd like to um, hear it because because of that reason, of, and of course because it's one of uh, Ben's best tracks. Okay, okay. And you can you can get uh, that original Sid feeling back if you just record the Sids on uh, cassette tapes and uh, listen to them <laughs> with your Walkman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I need to get a Walkman. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a minor detail. They are out of stock now, <laughs> kind of. Oh, well, thank you, Andreas, for joining us today. Uh, hey, thank you for asking me. It's, um, uh, like I said in my, in, in my Facebook post, just a, a short notice, uh, if, like, if people, I think people that uh, have met Ben, but also people that never met Ben, if you listen to some of his old Sid music, you hear his personality is, is loud and clear. It's, it's very present. In, yeah. in his songs. Yeah, I think I mentioned that with regard to Crackout, that is so uh, like the essence of Ben is kind of poured into that song. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. Sorry. Very much so, yeah. It's uh, not only that deflector as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. The deflector. Um, what else? Uh, rebounder. Uh, the subtune 2 is it's, it's him all the way. Uh, William <laughs> Wobbler. William Wobbler uh, hates Nebula. Uh, what else? Where well, there's a lot of lot of cool tracks and yeah, indeed. it's it's definitely his style. Indeed. Yeah, indeed. Everyone can check it out in the HVSC directory of Ben, of course, and uh, well, do a, a Ben marathon, a Sid marathon, of course. Yeah. I guess yep. several people do that now. So. Once again, thank you for your time and uh, hope to see you soon, I think, on X, probably. Uh, yeah, definitely on X. So, uh, looking forward to it. Indeed, a few yeah, weeks. A few too. weeks and, uh, well, we will be broadcasting from BitLive on the weekend as well. So, in case you might have some time next to the family or after the family, <laughs> you yeah, might hear yeah. it, what's going on there. If if nothing else, we'll we'll share to Ben's memory uh, in Holland. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I um, guess. Who was it, that, uh, Marcel, that suggested uh, he'd uh, grab uh, Ryan and see if they could uh, do some live set? Oh. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it would be lovely indeed. Have okay, a very guys, good night. Have, have a nice evening and I'll, I'll, I'll wait for the track. Okay, mm-hmm. here it comes. Uh, he already exceeded the normal limit of the show, but since today it's a special show, uh, still we have things to forward as message. And uh, of course, after that, uh, we let everyone go to sleep as well. So have a good night once again and see you good soon. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank okay, you. Good night. Bye-bye. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. See you. Uh, so yeah uh, he was our last live caller for today and still we have a message to forward namely uh, well stylishly enough uh, the last messages uh, will be from Chris Abbott uh, head of the 64 music scene as we can call him Uh, and uh, yeah right now we will definitely play crack out for Andreas and uh, I guess that after uh, Chris's recording we will come back to say goodbye if it's okay with you um, maybe um, get Fungus back on you know, and uh, uh, and of course quick. yes uh, f- yeah. we will get him back on as well because he has to uh, make uh, an announcement as well so yes uh, busy schedule still <laughs> and sorry for the extension Slagon I know that you don't like it but I guess this time it's uh, an exception. It is. So, crack out by Sid Rip for Andreas.
Yeah, I'll give you the edited version of The Last Ninja Wastelands with Ben from Underworld to post on online and uh, yeah, you get emotional. Yeah. Um, uh, seeing how seeing how good Ben was and how he uh, how much the fans were kind of enjoying it. And it's just seeing him so like full of life, even though you know he was feeling so shit. Mm. Mm. There's a there's a man. Yeah. Well, that was kind of his default mindset. Just plow through, go forward. Well, that's right. He'd never let anything stop him if he, unless it really, really did stop him. Yeah. Um, and that was, uh, you know, the show must go on. And but it's it wasn't just duty. It, it's music was was what he lived for. Yeah. And his family, you know. Yeah. But, it it was it's running music was running through him like a it's like a stick of Blackpool rock. <laughs> yeah. You talked to Ben for quite a while uh, since the early bit albums, right? Yeah, I, I first met him in met him in 1999 when he came to my house. Um, that was weird. <laughs> that was really strange. Um, you can imagine, like uh, I'd never. I don't know if he was the first Commodore 64 composer I'd met, but maybe because um, I'd, I'd sort of talked to Fred over the uh, over the internet. In December 2016, me and Ben were sitting down doing the orchestral versions of um, Trap and William Wobbler and uh, Arg Pandora, and uh, um, we were going through Trap line by line. And uh, he, we get to a bit where the harp is going, and he says, "Get that fucking ET shit out of my, <laughs> out of my arrangement." <laughs> like I know what you're trying to do there, but no, <laughs> no. How did it go again? <laughs> and, and at that point, Ark Pandora and what William Wobbler were together and called Ark Wobbler, and he said, "Nope, there's no reason for them to be together." They're not married or anything. Get them apart. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so uh, all three of those are being performed at the the concert. Mm. Um, and all three of those were. Uh, the, the orchestrators had a go at a uh, trap um, to make it slightly, slightly more feasible for wind players because it had a lot of long notes. You know, the beginning of trap mm, has yeah. lots of long sustained notes. Mm. And... Um, and that's the, the that had lots of wind players playing them, and um, it makes them run out of puff, and they're not particularly audible against the strings and the, the brass. Nah. Um, so uh, the orchestrator Ali Pickering did a a, a good job of um, simplifying that, and and it, what it means is that the, the big huge build from there is even bigger because it's starting from slightly lower down. Yeah, mm. get a bit of more range in there. Get more headroom in. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that's true of, uh, of uh, true of everything. Yeah. Um, um, William Wobbler's going to be a lot of fun. There'll be a lot of uh, audience clapping for that one, I think. <laughs> I think so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it's, it's a nice release from Trap, because yeah. Trap is now the second to last concert track. Mm. And um, that will be quite emotional for yeah. all of us. And uh, William Wobbler is kind of like the other side of Ben. It's the, the way we'd want him to remember. He, the way he would want us to remember him. Yeah, that was kind of uh, his self described him so to speak uh, reread uh, some of the interviews uh, with him and uh, he kind of uh, said or described himself as very kind of upbeat and happy and uh, bouncy type of person and mm. it, it, that certainly shines through him you know, when you see him on stage or anything it's like that is him he could be serious when he had to be, and uh, meticulous in terms of rehearsal. Mm. Um, uh, I mean, you've, you, you're at the rehearsals, Slagon. You've, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you've, you've seen him in action. Oh yeah, seen him at That's pretty a, much all of the that. rehearsals <laughs> for all of the beat lives. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he never dropped it. He, he never dropped his uh, essential bendness. No. But, he, but, but there was an intensity uh, to the, his musical seriousness when it was necessary that stopped it just that stops him just becoming a clown 
uh, it was it was a very it was a it was all genuine um, but it was never overdone hmm. mm. yeah well, I think that is the drive to want something to work really well when you actually perform it when it matters then yes. you can be more playful when you know that you've rehearsed it to death basically and then well poor choice of words there uh, well I'm not not <laughs> sure you can call anything rehearsed to uh, hugely when it involves Sid 80s yeah true with the rehearsals by email mm, that is true um, but uh, they always pulled it off and uh, um, it was usually usually Ben who managed to pull it together I mm. think everyone everyone loved Ben yeah, it's hard not to. Oh, yeah, impossible not to. Hmm. Unless you happen to enjoy very, very serious jazz. <laughs> 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 and there's that story on, I, I read them, um, there's this uh, Celtic folk group who and uh, who are playing serious Celtic folk rock on stage, and suddenly Ben bursts into the pub, all like it's all scruffy as usual, and runs up to them with his flute, takes a, his flute out of the box, and starts performing with them. <laughs> He's not in the group. <laughs> he just uh, starts, you know, playing like a, a Pied Piper or a little or, or, or uh, a Shakespeare's Puck, and uh, the the one of the the the, the audience were like we don't like this this is not serious Celtic folk but one w at least one of the guys on stage was like wow <laughs> I have got to perform with this guy and he went he performed performed with him uh, in a, one of one of Ben's other bands um, so that that's how they met oh, wow what a story <laughs> The idea of Ben just bursting in, <laughs> doing yeah. his little tw twiddly thing, <laughs> and running away again <laughs> as fast as he came. <laughs> just <laughs> I can see that. It's in very front of Ben. Me. Yeah, very. Uh, I can see that in front of me. <laughs> oh, oh, Ben. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Ben was Ben went to loads of places, not just Bit Live or whatever. He went to Revival and um, CGE and uh, Retro this and whatever. He was uh, that Norwegian thing, Messerspiel or something. Mm. Um, he was amazingly accessible, and luckily a lot of people got memories of him. And so you know, he 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 met an awful lot of people and made an awful lot of people very happy. Which is why it's it's kind of like I I, I I kind of have a little cry inside when someone's like, Oh, I never knew I, I wanted to meet him all my life but I didn't I say he was right there, man. <laughs> yeah, he was very He was there he was there for you and you didn't come. Indeed. Indeed. There were a lot of people who weren't there that night on in the underworld or back at Brighton. And now I think maybe they wish they had been yeah and they didn't grab life by the it, it it's not just about like buying tickets or, or whatever it's about taking the opportunity to see people while they're still alive yeah this is a sh this is a short window of opportunity we've got the concert um is the last time we'll probably get everyone together on that ma on that scale and we've got gaps already and um, people need to, if, if it's been their dream to meet somebody, bloody well meet them. Don't make excuses. Yeah. And yeah li li point. Life is tough. It's very difficult to find resources for stuff. But, you know, prioritize if it's your dream. If it's not your dream, fine. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's just something you vaguely wanted to do, you know. Yeah. It's your decision, but if if you really dreamed about something and it was possible to do it and you didn't do it, you feel terrible later when when it becomes impossible to do. Yeah, yeah it's one of those uh, regrets that you kind of have the rest of your life. You know, oh, I should have. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's right. He was going to conduct trap at mm. the concert, and he'd always wanted to conduct trap, and I've, I'm. Well, we we kind of went, we went to, went to his house in 2015 to interview him for various things, and uh, I, I think we've got him on on camera pleading to the camera that, to be able to conduct trap. 
and it's heartbreaking that, that he can't. Yeah. He almost got there. We thought, oh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, like, he survived way longer than, way longer than we'd feared, and the cancer had stabilised. And so I, I was beginning to dare to think, maybe he can make it. This would be great. That would have been so wonderful. Oh, I know, right? Yeah. But, uh, no. I had this image of him conducting uh, in his scruffy clothing and everything, and then uh, <laughs> another image where he actually dressed up in a, what's it called? The... Uh, the conductor's outfit. <laughs> What's the, it called? The tuxedo. Tuxedo. Uh, yes. I, I, uh, I think he would have. Um, I think he would have dressed up for that. Yeah, somewhere. I think so too. But uh, it, it just did not mesh in my head. Him in a tuxedo. It just didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. And then uh, uh, imagining him in a tuxedo and conducting trap with the way he moves and everything that it just doesn't gel very well would have with been the tuxedo. Quite yeah. Uh, it's just a, such a funny image, and I really would have wanted to see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It <laughs> well, I, I, I would have, um, I would have enjoyed seeing him conduct wobbler. He'd be like uh, to the, to the, to the, to the, to the crowd because it was going to. It's right after, so he would have been like, uh, you know, clap. You know, he, he would have been had the audience eating out of his hand. Yeah. And, and that that bit where it does the War of the Worlds bit, he would have led them in a sing-along. <laughs> of course. There was a discussion uh, uh, about the Deo Deo uh, bit in there. What, uh, what I think it was uh, a bit of... Uh, Ryan said it was Ben's idea, and Ben said it was Ryan's idea. That, uh, well, it was kind of... If you listen to the original, it doesn't actually go Deo Deo. No, it's just kind of like ah, or something. It's, a, it's not Deo Deo. I, I'm pretty sure it was Ben who kind of took that idea and ran with it. <laughs> so, uh, to, so to so Ryan, it would be Ben who came up with Deo Deo, <laughs> and then where it would be put, and then how doing a Deo 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 Deo. But to Ben, it was it was the idea came from from Ryan's original thing. So, right, Ben brings out the best in everybody. Indeed. Yeah, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Indeed. Mm. Oh, well, it's a pleasure. Um, well, have, have a good evening. Uh, you, you too. too. All right. See, See, See you later. You. Bye. 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 We almost played what we wanted uh, because I intended to prepare uh, for Kate Bit Jamie Maxwell's uh, guitar arrangement, but turned out to be not the same video that we, what we wanted to go for. So uh, I think we might carry on with another request in that case. Sorry, Kate. Maybe maybe next time we can make it. I think and. Uh, I guess uh, after this we will soon uh, welcome back Fungus on air uh, for just a short while because he wants to tell us something.
So this was uh, Bombo, uh, made by Hazel and not available now, KO. And hello, Fungus, welcome back on air. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, yes, great to hear you uh, again. Just a so indeed. Uh, some feedback. Uh, do you have some feedback? No, uh, I, I don't hear anything. No, it's okay. not fun here. That I think it should okay. be okay. Yeah, indeed. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> I just wanted to say, <coughs> uh, because I know we're at the end of the show. Um, while I was talking, I mentioned that uh, after we worked at Grendon, me and Ben were working in an office on a top secret project, which is to do with 3D graphics. And this project needed some music. So what happened was, we would work on the project during the day, and then at night, we would drive um, two hours to a very small recording studio in Wales, work on the music until three or four o'clock in the morning, get in the car, drive two hours back to Sheffield, and arrive maybe six a.m. Wow. <coughs> to make the music for this project. And we did that every day for like three or four weeks. So we were quite tired by the end of it. Oh my <laughs> God, yeah. <laughs> we can imagine. And anyway, while I was talking, I remember I've got a CD of the music for that that project, which nobody's ever heard, because the project was a big failure. So it never got so released? It, it never got finished, but we have, I've got the, the music for that project here on a, an actual CD. That's excellent. So I was just thinking that maybe we could release that CD, or maybe do something like put it, uh, sell it on eBay, and put the money towards cancer research or something like that. Oh, Sounds that's like lovely. A very, very yeah. good idea. Indeed. So we could organize that maybe do it if you have a, another show next week you could organize that or uh yeah yeah definitely we, we can talk can about it yeah absolutely because um, i want to talk to sarah first uh, ben's wife sarah yeah mm -hmm. because she's on the cd as well she does some voiceovers and yeah yeah so good nice. idea all, you have to imagine us all going in a car over the mountains in the snow and nice mm -hmm. trying not to die <laughs> every day for weeks <laughs> <laughs> to make this music sounds like a really really good idea to me okay. uh, we can uh, iron these things out I guess over uh, the coming few days uh, see where we land uh, okay sure um, but uh, we'll, we'll be uh, away for back in time live uh, this weekend uh, <coughs> but meanwhile I Get, what kind of uh, music is this? Well, it's not it's not Sijit music. So it's no, actual no. guitars and drums and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, cool. Hmm. Absolutely. So it's kind of not not heavy rock, but kind of rock music. Some of it. Yeah, but That's it would be love to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds awesome. Okay, so. Do it in memory of Ben, okay? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, uh, get back to us be because we would be definitely happy to promote this and uh, and it's uh, great if it can get to uh, as much people as possible, I think, so. Okay, sure. So, yeah, so I'll talk to you over the next few days. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, yeah. thank you for keeping with us, uh, keeping up with us here uh, for, for so long. We, we also didn't know how long the show would be because this is a, an exceptional one and usually we keep it in a three hour time frame. But, uh, but uh, really, it's, it's really great that you could make it and, and listen. And uh, oh, it's, been, it's been interesting. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Hear, hearing from uh, people that are a bit more distant from uh, from your regular kind of uh, what do you call it? Oh, I, I, Point I'm of view. <laughs> no, well, your your regular crowd, so to speak. So uh, get a bit of an outside view of of the man as well. I guess. Yeah, and the legend, yes. <laughs> yeah. whom you have known closely. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that must the have been interesting. legend, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Hmm. Yeah. Well, um, let's. Uh, okay, so we let everybody go to bed now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, uh, my uh, my words are failing me now. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's uh, hard to tell anything about after this evening, I guess. And uh, also, we have a 
long way to go this week. So, so yes, uh, thank you once again for uh, being with us uh, till the end of the show, and uh, wish you all the best. And uh, and I don't know, hope to meet you and your work at some point, and definitely uh, catch up with us if you need any promotion for this CD. It would be lovely to hear it. Okay, yeah, I'll definitely. I'll call you in the next. Um, next when's the next show? Uh, you know, we, we do it every Tuesday, usually. Every Tuesday, okay. Yeah. So maybe next Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, Sounds that could work. We could do that. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So okay. I'll talk to you then. All right. Talk okay. to you soon then. Talk to you soon. <laughs> okay. Bye. Have a good right. night. Bye. Have a good night. Bye bye. <laughs> Right. So, uh, I think we should close the show now uh, because, uh, well, obviously people would like to go to sleep too, I guess. And uh, Yeah, but I, I seem to kind of, I don't know what's going on uh, in my head. Uh, I had a kind of stomach rumble there for a while and now my words are leaving me so I'm kind of yeah I think we told everything and no cracks we are not doing an all-nighter we never do that actually (laughs) because that's not in our policy today is just a special occasion so we did it uh, with over half hour but uh, we won't really do such thing regularly Back in time live is it might be probably a, an exception because uh, well you will hear us uh, or well here on Slay Radio basically all Friday evening all Saturday evening if the streaming works well everything that is happening there so uh, on Friday and Saturday you can count on us uh, doing some live check-in from Norway and also uh, there would be the live event scheduled check on the Slay Radio page uh, the live schedule because there are certainly every event uh, separately scheduled there and you can hear of course live Rhino and uh, Vierun Tell and uh, Fast Loaders and uh, well, uh, Chris, who's back, likely also will talk in a panel discussion, maybe. And, well, well, we might see how many people we can catch for a short interview or just to forward you the mood or parts of it. Also, I think Rex will do a show on Thursday. Uh, he might not have added it yet, but he usually does that, I think. Uh, and uh, thank you for everyone for listening and uh, thank you for all those people uh, dedicating their time for us uh, to honor Ben's memory and uh, and I guess not much things to add Uh, anything to add Slaycon? No um, not other than what you already said, see you on uh, Friday yeah, indeed, and sorry for everyone who could not uh, make it today to the request list or on any other way, but we were really, really busy here with uh, with the schedule that we had to keep, so uh, I guess it's understandable. And uh, wish you, all of you, uh, the best for the week, and don't forget to catch up with us later on, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so this week is full of events still. And we decided to wind down with uh, Pex and Rowley and Biggles. Am I right? Indeed. Yes. Indeed. So have a good night, everyone. And thank you once again for listening. Good night. And see you around, Ben. See you around.
Yeah. 